Cause that's, that's the only. I don't know what they want to do to appreciate it. Let, later on, they'll be hollering one day. Whoo, I'm freezing. Whoo, I'm so hot. Whoo, I'm freezing. Whoo, I'm so hot. I'm so horny. So hot. Can't say horn. I'm so hot. All right, too loud. Ain't that right? Ain't that, we can be loud. Just don't get too loud. You know, you know, ain't that wrong being loud. Just don't get too loud. Ain't that right? Y'all all right? Appreciate Yahuwah again for another Yoon. Spreading our Kai. Um, definitely um, desiring everybody really, really, really going over your uh, your life, making sure where you're at. I can't stress that enough. But this thing here winding up. I made no mistakes. I was looking today. Um, I saw some India. India getting ready. I think they wanted the largest rice exporter. They getting ready to cut back about 40 percent. Somebody said that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff y'all don't realize. They may, they may get ready to starve us out. Everything man get ready to do, you have to turn. I'm telling y'all, you, you mess around, you want to. Y'all keep playing. Young people, you know, and it's a good thing for you. You know, he cutting the thing short quick so you don't get a chance to get out there. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of folks out there, they can't make it back. You ain't going to make it back. It's, it's tight. There's a lot of folks, you ain't going to make it back. You don't get out there, they man cutting their place off. They about that saying Arizona's about 115, 116. Yeah, I got a cousin, he's on um, Border Patrol up there. He's, I think they said like 116. Yeah, it's pretty high. You who are cooking that place? He, don't, he, listen, he burned that place apart. He fought, listen, and one reason what's killing the right, they showing the sugar cane field, they showing them overseas, they dried out. They, listen, they ain't getting no, listen, all that stuff dried out, gone. You know, sugar and everything you got. Y'all don't know, sugar and cigarettes. Yeah, they got everything. Got to, listen, sugar is addictive flavor for anything. Anything you want to say, ketchup, sugar. Everything you eat got sugar in it. Even if, yeah, God, that's your, that's the attraction to make you take it. Sugar. That's how they get you. Most of them really know that they be eating the tummy. This ain't sugar, this ketchup. Y'all better look at that stuff, read the ingredients. I remember my mom used to read all them ingredients. Mm, this sodium. I said, lady, put this stuff in the bucket, quit reading it. Listen, you get that high blood pressure, you get all this stuff, you get this I be reading too, you be looking at Put them chill right back, and that's I ain't be ten thousand. That means you finna stroke out right down the scene. You got no. And see what they get you the people down. This ain't got that much soda in it. That's pay attention. That's per serving. You get a bag of chip per serving might be three, four chips. You don't eat the whole bag. Talking about this bag, this big It ain't got but ain't got but a hundred grams of sodium. That's per serving. You know what I mean? The serving you just ate. You way over the limit. See, that's how they manipulate it, because you reading the bad thing, that's the whole content. I said, so what I'm doing, I'm going to take my young people. We need to bring some product. I need to teach my young people. See, a lot of what we don't, we don't know. A lot of them, they'll tell you, they don't, they don't know. They don't pay attention how they trick you. They show you the number. You assume that it says per serving. What messed you up? Now you, how much is a serving? So you just ate a whole bag. So how many grams of sodium did you eat? See, that's how they beat you every time. And most, most of us don't know. I mean, think about it. Health taught us something. I know I was in health. If they did teach, I don't remember. They didn't teach us about how to read them for no serve. We were coming on. It wasn't an issue though. Back in my time, it wasn't an issue. I don't know about that. how many y'all took health in school. Did they teach y'all about how to read products and count serving? A lot of see, but guess who they do teach it to? Y'all like think about it. Y'all see when you like McDonald's had to put up calorie counts and all, cause white people want to know stuff. Like, think when we worry about a calorie. I want to give me a burger. I ain't worry about no calorie. You know. You don't realize they look at those calories make a difference on how much you're going to retain weight. You're trying to lose weight. A lot of stuff you eat is working against you. And a lot of times, like, like y'all work out, but what you eat, it don't, it, don't, it don't correspond. You don't realize what it does. I be working, I be working. Look at how much your intake is. You sitting there, put on the machine. Most of them don't look at it. It'll show you how many calories you burn, which you don't actually burn until you sleep, but it let you know a projected amount. So it's a lot of, like, you Michelle, we do just use them. They use things they have to understand. It's a science. They build stuff for a sign. We just grab stuff, start doing stuff, and you don't realize that's why you do more detriment you laid out. So you try to, well, I, I appreciate Mr. Yahuwah for, you know, allowing us to go back and see our ignorance has hurt us. And not knowing how to read and when we thought we were read, you didn't even comprehend what you were reading. So you don't realize some of your detriment came in through you. And now he's given us the intelligence to come back and look at, if we made these many stupid mistakes, Reading products. I don't, just let me ask you in your mind. That, what, do, did you take health in school? But your school was mixed, though. It was mixed, predominantly black or half and half. Okay. Well, health. Did they talk about stuff like that? Like if they did. They did talk about health, like servings and different things. See, that's a difference, though. Y'all had who? 
I had home economics. All we did was eat. Man, we ate eggs. All they, the first thing they taught how to make was donut. We went and bought them blow up, uh, what you call them, them donut, them uh, we got the can of donut biscuit, cut the hole out the middle, had sugar, a bag of sugar, and man, I didn't wait my friend to come out. Had that room lit up. They be like, can't get none. It's class for the class. Man, you had that stuff coming up, though, said, man, man, where that is, man? I can't, they're for the class. Have a, I mean, you got a, man, you on with a bag of bacon? Yeah, for the class. Listen, man, first, man, listen, that, that how you do. You got to play that. Like, we like, man, how much that? Man, that for sense. Man, man, no home economics. But you see, I seen some niggas I know that now, and them niggas were cooking. I said, what? And I mean, they like, man, can't they for the class? I'm like, what kind of stuff is this? I signed my black behind right up next to me. I was in that thing. Listen, man, we did bread, we did pancake egg. I said, I don't know why them folks suck at me talking about no sissy. This is the life in him. Listen, mine was time right by lunch. So you get through a lunch, I ain't worried about getting enough. I'm going straight to home making nothing. Now, somebody signed up, tried to catch up with me. They signed up for the one where you sewing. You seem to pay attention, nigga. You got the wrong class. There ain't no eating it now. Needle and thread. Now, if they making some style of clothes, they pay it off. But they said they didn't talk to us about it. They didn't talk to us. I don't remember them teaching that. Let me say this. I was greedy. And that lady said it went by my head so fast. All I want to do is, first I want to come in and do cut this stove on. Let's get this stove cranking. We can do all the learning while we cooking. You know what I'm saying? But it just show you where a lot of times, no doubt, some of our schools probably did, but they didn't enforce it enough to teach us about it. Because health wasn't that important as far as what you're eating as far as calorie. That wasn't something that was promoted a lot of back during our time. Because young people didn't have blood pressure. You know, we didn't, I didn't know nothing about it. Uh, maybe somebody had diabetes, it was something they were born with, you know. But that wasn't a, that wasn't a big thing when I was coming along in school. Probably in some of y'all era, more, it started becoming more predominant. Like in y'all era, the younger people, it probably, probably 50% of them got blood pressure. Are they, are they borderlining for it? Because the food, the sugar, the salt, so you figure how many things are trapped that's getting you. Then we're not looking at preservatives. They didn't tell about no preservatives. They think about when some preservative keeps something. So you eating food with preservative, which means it's, your body's supposed to be excreting or expelling. Your body's holding on to it because you got a chemical in it that said preserve. So that's fighting against the science of your body. Your body is designed that when it eats things, it, it extracts what it needs, the rest of it. It's, I can't use this. I got to expel it, you know what I'm saying, through urination, through defecation. But now since you're taking some culprit got with preservatives in it, it's fighting against the science of your body. Now, how is it throwing off the system, how the system works? You see what I'm saying? They're like sticking a hole like the toilet. It's designed to flood. But if you stick enough tissue in it, it clogs it because it's working against how the system works or too thick of a tissue. So now you think about putting these chemicals in your body that are working against the system. How is this really affecting you? Why so many people, I can't lose weight, I can't do it, my hormone. You, you, you can't stay consistent in behavior. Your, your thinking process, you got most of these kids now, listen, let me tell you something. We had written when I was coming along. It was called a paddle and a belt. Right. Set your behind down. Yep. Nobody finna be getting you no pit, man, we let, they used to get stuck to white kids. Yep. I don't know, when you were coming, were any kids taking written at your school? Did you know them? Probably, okay, so it wasn't that prominent in your school. I remember, they, they had to talk, Elementary was typically when they gave it to kids. You remember that? That's when I heard. I remember, I remember them talking about it, but it was a joke. It was a joke, though. Nobody, your cousin had, it's not a disease. It's a, that's, that's a gift. He was a take it. But see, that's, that's how it was when we were coming along. And you know what? Wasn't nothing wrong with your cousin. He was just, it's just what it was, people were lazy. You know what I'm saying? Tip it was. That's how we look. We look at white people just don't want to whoop their kids. That's what, I, that's what I was saying back then. Because tip a black kid, you're going to sit your behind down. They take that battle. I'm going to really go. Man, that was an insult. You told a black parent about putting their kid down. These parents here, these baboons will go sit down and with a counselor and discuss putting on Ritalin. Like, not happening. I got some, I got, I'm going to really that behind. And right. I'm going to, I got resolve. Ain't that right? Every time they get let me know, I'm going to beat the brakes off of them. They go back to let you whip these kids and come whoop them in class. Man, I'm telling you something, man, you be the best student all the way through college. Think of, man, listen, if Henry Grady had come in that class with me, I'd still be an A student now and I'm out of school. Them folks be like, please quit sitting there working. I'm like, listen, I owe y'all this. <laughs> man, man, that man to beat the brakes. Came to your school. How many of y'all parents came to y'all school and whooped you before? You all whooped you before at school? Your mom did. How embarrassed were you? Oh, she took you outside. But everybody knew, though, then. You can't make enough sniffing. That, and then that hurt. You better not cry. 
<laughs> like, if you don't cry, they're going to beat you worse. Then when you're crying, stop crying. You're like, listen, can we go with a rule for you, Swain? Now, you need me to cry immediately, right? Man, they whoop you, you don't cry. They be like, man, here comes Now I got a kid. What your daddy did, he whoop you when he cried. He didn't whoop you and say, him. <laughs> I mean, they got to kill you. Mm-hmm. These kids, they parents now, they be, I'm so proud of you. Keep being strong. I mean, <laughs> listen, you whooping them, make them cry. Then you whooping them, start crying. These are the control factors. They scare this stuff. Now, these people out here, they're talking about, oh, these folks report, these are the people who want your kids. Y'all don't realize it, y- young people. Your parents don't chastise you and whoop you because they hate you. Think they're looking at the consequences of your action. What you might look at, well, I don't see where it's hurt nobody. When you get out here in society and you can't follow rules, that's what the police for. That's what prisons and jails are for. So the purpose of whooping your child is to try to curve that appetite, curve those behaviors before they get you. Because when they get you and beat you, defect don't come get you. If the police whoop you, ain't no defect come to get you. You're going to jail. And when you get in jail, you're getting beat. Now when y'all go to jail, you got to join the game. Ain't no option no more. You can't, pick, you can't pick neutral. Once you get in, you got to claim one right then. It's done. Ain't no option. Ain't no, I'm not game. You finna get raped. You finna get beat. You gonna probably get killed. So our goal is to try to do prevention by giving y'all guys enough information while you're young to consider. You can, ain't no future in jail. <laughs> Go and tattoo in your face. Who you think finna hide you in a Fortune 500 country with that food on your face? Junk wrote all on your neck and all down your hands and your foot. Nobody want to do you look, listen, you look like a killer. You look crazy. You can be a newborn, born again, saved, filled with rock, but the appearance had killed you. So y'all young people got an opportunity to do the right thing while you're young. Don't make these stupid decisions. Anybody in prison to tell you that ain't the life. You're going to wind up being gay. You sit too long. You want to, I know they were talking about, one gentleman used to go, he was talking about, he was a jailer. Um, in uh, intake that. He said a young guy, that, a guy that, well, I don't know, young, they locked him up. He got raped by 80 guys. They raped that guy so bad, all he was doing was vomiting up their semen. Can you imagine semen coming out your mouth? 88 guys raped him when he got in now. Y'all young people, you don't want to risk it. It ain't no place for it. This is the best place for you on this side right here. Don't, listen, it look cool. I know you're looking at your friend. Give it some years. When you get out here in real life, that stuff don't work. These guys looking tough. They, they on mama and daddy money. Yeah. When you get out mama and daddy money, get out here, just say, show me the money. Right. Right. Show me the money. They ain't got no money. All they got is thugging, little reputation, and it's just a matter of time you get killed. Because once enough people learn about you, the first thing come along, kill you. Yeah. I had a friend, that's what they did to him. He was so good with his hands, it didn't even make no sense. That juggle would know he was good with his hands. And that got him killed, too. Listen, he, in a minute, he'll just tell you, he said, let's slap box. I had another part. He about 265. He was slim looking. He was a slim guy. But listen, that juggle, he'll talk to you while he do He'll tell you what he's going to do before he do it. So they was at Sid Flair one time. There were about four of them. I didn't go with them. And uh, he got, he wanted to try a bigger guy who used to be with us. And uh, he was like, he was like let the, my, the partner of mine who was bigger had Brad Knuckles. And he went the first time. He won that thing. So he just, he, he not a gun, he wasn't a gun guy. He just kept going. He said, listen, a little bit later, he told, he said, put the brand knuckle back on. Let's do it again. Tore him out the frame. That's what kind of person he was. He'll tell you before you do it. He said, he said, cut, left eye. When he said that, your eye cut. I seen him hit, listen, I seen him hit, listen. Boy, by C4, he, about, listen, he played, he, listen, he said, he said, razor cut, left eye. Listen, I ain't like that. I open up just like that. All you seen was the white meat, then the blood came out. I said, goodness. He told me when he said, he said, he said, come on, man. He said, slap bar. I said, I'll shoot you. I ain't lying. I told him flat. I said, I, I told I said, I would kill you. I said, you'll never get an opportunity to do no food like that, man. You're not going to talk to me and put no hand. It's not happening. I'm like, I don't know what these guys are thinking. I told him, listen, never have. I said, I, I said, I will kill you. In the story. I said, man, I'm playing no game. Like, I seen you do this to too many people. So he did it too many people, whooped him up, got shot. I went to the hospital one time and seen he got shot. He died twice. Brought him back, got through, he got back out, did it again to somebody. The lad guy, he was done with it. Blowed that drug away and killed him. So when I tell y'all, you're, when people like, people don't want to play with you. That stuff will look good starting off. You, oh, you famous. Oh, you good with your hands. It's some people ain't taking no hands. They're not taking it. You can take a shot. Leave it alone. 
I need what I'm gonna get y'all guys to do. All my young people, I'm gonna buy you a hosted Twinkie. I want you to just mash it like that easy. That's what you're gonna be, a Twinkie. I want you real soft. Then we're gonna mash it one time, and the goo gonna come out. That's gonna be you. If you can live and you can get out here, and you can make it with your whore, and you can stop these folk prison and stop these streets and stop homelessness. They're gonna be the best. Twinkie. Ain't that right? That's gonna don't don't listen. That stuff don't pay off in the long run. No matter how you on no jaw, talking about can you throw them hands? Man, <laughs> man, ain't that junk on no app? Tell how, what application y'all sit on? Can you throw them hands? And it's just a matter of time you run across the wrong person. Use your head. Use your head. Y'all got to need a future. Y'all hear me? I want to tell y'all what made future avoid stuff. If you can avoid it, that's the best thing. For at least you be on this side. No, I can't let nothing go. Then you be sitting down the rest of your life. And you explain that to a jury. Yeah, I just couldn't let it go. Jury say, yeah, life in prison. That's the only thing they say. It, a lot of stuff will look logical when you're in the moment. But in reality, when you look at it down the road, man, you could avoid that and kept going. I couldn't let that. In case. I couldn't let nobody say I was soft. And then you sit here in prison the rest of your life. And you know how people look at you? They're real stupid. Talking about some kind, somebody else's mouth. You can't let somebody say what they want to say out of their mouth. You don't control nobody's mouth. That's they mouth. Long they don't put no hands on you. You got to learn to move away. Young people, that time we get involved, a lot of stuff that become detrimental for a lifetime. Get smart. Start using your head. You know what I'm saying? Think of your future before you start making things, before you start doing things. Y'all got it? All right, young people. Young people? That's you know what I'm talking about. I care about y'all future. I don't want to see y'all waste all that time like we did. We don't get rid of the sound of Kato Sarah. Right. Now you gonna do that extra one? We clap and you still be blowing? <laughs> no, I just no. I'm saying I say we just want to know. You know what I'm saying? So we can prepare. We don't be clapping. You still blowing? You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Malcolm. I didn't know, man. Malcolm said, something told me to keep going. You did that to him for real, Justin. What a clear content. That's all right. Malcolm said, Malcolm said, it's going to be another time. And like, it ain't over with yet. Everybody all right? All right, we're going to look at this, um, Romans 15 and 4. Of course, did y'all learn anything, though, Layla? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I, I, I definitely... um. I can't stress enough how much I want to see us get it together too, not just our young people, us as well. Uh, it's critical that we um, get this information and we look at it and, and take it at face value. You know, having an understanding is so critical when you're looking at your salvation. It's weighing everything. You see all this stuff going on just like we read in um, <coughs> Beth Cuff, Second Peter, the third chapter last night. When you're seeing all this stuff dissolve, what, what amount of person you need to be? At the end of the day, what type of person you really need to be? You need to consider. You know, if you hold into something, you're doing something, um, what's the value in it when it all comes down to the end of what you got to look at? Is it really worth it? If I'm getting ready to die, is my car, my house, my money, my jewelry, is it worth it? Nothing worth my life. That's right. Worth my soul. If nothing worth my life, I mean, think about it. Somebody coming and say, give me all your money. What you saying? I can get it, nigga, everything. You thinking, I don't know, I don't know this guy might search me. Some people, some people say I'm going to take a chance. He probably, now you wind up getting yourself shot or injured. When it comes down to it, your life over your thing, you're looking at, man, you got to be ready to let it go. And when y'all sit here, this is the mindset you got to have. Your life on the line. That man asked you to give me everything. What you do? I want y'all to all imagine that. That man got a gun in your head. He said, nigga, give me everything you got. So what you ready to hold on? What you going to take a chance to risk? Give me everything you got, nigga. I'm going to kill you. That's, that's it. What you, what you, what you going to try to take a chance with? Don't, don't lie. Some of us would. Some of us say, I ain't going to tell him about, you know, I got some of my salt. What if he decide to search you? You know, think it is. It's always that person who play clear and that right. You know, I'm going to take a chance. Maybe he won't notice it. Turn my watch around. Maybe he'll think it's something. 
I just said, the words were, nigga, give me everything you got, I'm going to kill you. What you trying to keep? Huh? Why wouldn't you try to keep something? I appreciate that, Desi. That's what everybody wants you to realize. Your life on the line. What you trying to keep? It's going to make a difference whether or not you're going to live. The old word with you, nigga, give me everything you got, I'm going to kill you. How y'all understand everything? As a man. Yahuwah is telling you that now. He want everything you got. He talking about your heart. He talking about your mind. He talking about your nefash. That's everything you got. The other stuff you got alone. He said, that's your, I let you have that. Now, he just told you, nigga, give me everything you got, I'm going to kill you. Now, what you trying to hold on to? That means you can't think your own thoughts now. Huh? That means you can't love the world. But think about what, you have to think about it. Because if he take it from you now, you can't love the world. You can't think your own thoughts. Y'all got me. And you ain't in control of your life. See? You, see, that's something for you to think about. They're like a person giving up. You think about it, I'm finna get a man everything I got who just told me he gonna kill me. And I'm not gonna have it anymore at that point. He's gonna run off with it somewhere, and I'm never, I probably never gonna get it back. The police probably never gonna catch him. But you know, at the moment, I'm not processing that. You know what I'm processing? This man finna kill me. This later on, I'm thinking about I might not never get it. But at that moment, I'm looking at this. That man said he was gonna kill me. I'm like, nigga, you crazy. I wouldn't give him nigga nothing, nigga. I'd have held on to my that nigga had to kill me. That's some of you. Come on, that's how come how many, you know how many people give you stupid advice like that after? I tell you, man, nigga had to kill me. You know, that's a stupid fool. You let them stay where they at. I ain't finna risk my life, man. I ain't worth it. Let you have that. You now look at it. Now you ain't got nothing. Listen to him. I got my life. That's what I want you to consider today. If that man took everything from you, you got your life. Y'all understand that premise? That's where we at. If y'all, if you don't process it in that type of manner and understand it like that, you don't keep playing. You ain't serious. You just gonna keep playing. Y'all hear me? Yes, what's the thing? Okay, you right there. What, what, what's the thing? I guess you don't want to hear the because they just look at me like, huh? <laughs> thing part? What's the thing, y'all? I can't hear y'all. Stay focused. Come put a check up about your dad's name. <laughs> I went to put up there by your dad's name. Your dad knew better than that before you answered it, didn't he? So now, what's the thing? No. That right, nigga, give me everything. Come on, bitch, come on. <laughs> it don't matter, kids, white folk, come on. I ain't got time, come on, white folk. I got penna, come on. What are you doing? Chris, if you don't got white, you turn white, but you don't been dropping the ball a lot, regular. <laughs> listen, when you was a coon, you would get like a check maybe. Y'all remember that? It'd be like, in between, it like, check, 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 get it right. You don't wear white too well, do you? <laughs> yeah, now they're allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, that is true though. <laughs> That's crazy. You got to check up, you put up there for your daddy. That ain't your fault. Ain't that right? He knew better than that. So the, the theme for us today is, nigga, give me everything you got, I'm going to kill you. Y'all got it? That's what that man wants to do, give him everything we got. Now, he's not literally saying that, but I want you to think, cause think in a crisis, in a moment like that happen. You're not thinking about your stuff. You're just thinking about, I want to get out of this situation. If you're trying to get out of your situation where you're constantly embattling things, struggling with things, whether it's sexually, whether it's a financial, whether it's relationship, whatever it is, then you got to start looking at what I need to do right now to do it. That means you got to let go and release. Y'all got it. That's your banner. You got to let it go. It's your life. Your life on the line. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. All right, let's see. Roman 15 and 4 for those watching. Beth Hyman, she also appreciate all the text last night. I must say, y'all usually don't text me like that. Something must have happened. But I ain't getting no money, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> man, I had to preach something just to live now. It's Beth coming. Beth Hyman, she, I guess. What say, white man? It's coming. Not you. That man done worried me so bad today. Y'all, I walked in the door. I said, that man ran me down the hood. Me, I need to talk to you, preacher. I said, no, you don't. Go back in there. That man followed me everywhere around this synagogue here talking to me. This man got numbers in his head. I don't know where he got them from. I never gave it to him. Listen, so the Beth Hyman Shiak is the program we use today. Romans 15 and 4 is where we start. And the reason why we start here, why, gentlemen? It's a base. Foundation. That's right. You got to have a premise for what you're doing. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. All right, let's see. When they asked you, when Yahushua taught them a, a Marshallee, what they call a parable, about some young men that were sitting around, he asked them why were they sitting around. They said, because nobody hired them. 
Right. They had a rationale for why they weren't doing. He said, "Nobody put us to work. That's right. So we need to know why you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. You got it? Yes, sir. So here he said it. So this is what we use Roman 15 and 4 because we're trying to establish a foundation, a premise for why we do what we do. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. All right, listen. For whatever Nikatab before. So for whatever was written before. Nikatab to Lama. It was written to teach us, to instruct us, and to show us. That's the purpose. You remember that? It's the only reason. So if you're not using it properly, it's not the word. It's just you. You just don't know. You're not scared of what you're doing. Y'all got it. At the end of the day, this is the purpose showing you what it is. It's written to show you, to teach you, and to instruct you. You read it. You say, well, I don't know what to do. Then you ain't used it properly because it's supposed to show you what to do. Y'all got it? It gives you illustration. Y'all got it? So it establishes <coughs> what to do and what not to do. Y'all get it? It puts limits for what you can do and put off limits for you. Y'all got it? Everything in our living is entailed is entailed in here. We just had to learn how people didn't teach how to, they taught us how to run, how to cry, read some, shout and run and sing. They never taught us how to live. That's just that being honest. They taught us how to usher. They taught us how to sing in the choir. They taught us how to pass out fans and program. They never taught us how to live. That's right. That's being honest. That's, That's right. all they did. They taught us how to put on skits and plays and create little stuff for kids and, and daycares and nursery. They never taught us how to live. That's right. The average person, it ain't just, uh, there are people just hadn't taught us how to live. It ain't, it ain't about just one culture, it ain't not uh, one race. It's all of us. All we do today is theatrics. People yeah. are just playing. People are not honest and getting to real, because people don't want to deal with the deeper core part of themselves because you feel vulnerable. People feel, I'm vulnerable. If I open up, then I'm vulnerable. Then you know me. Y'all got, then I leave no excuses. Like he told us to confess. People don't, people don't want to come in. They ain't y'all. I don't know y'all people. Maybe people talk to y'all, tell y'all what I've done. But you're doing it. Yeah. That's the problem with it. You ain't, you're ashamed to tell it, but you ain't ashamed to do it. Right. Right. That's the part. Why, why we weren't ashamed when we were doing it? That's right. Well, I know some people said some things we were, but not <clears> in this entirety. And the purpose of doing it is to expose ourselves and being exposed, so therefore you'll learn what to do. Y'all got it. But as long as you can keep hiding, you don't get no better. It's true. All right? So we understand that. So for whatever was written before, it was written to teach us, show us, instruct us. So that so, through endurance. <clears throat> going through without quitting. And through the nakum of the Kitubim. And through the comfort of the writings. We might have tikva. That's what we're looking at. Um, let's see. We, we, we were talking about Layla um, last night on how um, it's important to establish with him um, an agreement. Agreement makes a difference. If we're doing a, a deal, say Dex and I are doing a deal, <coughs> it comes into a situation where I feel like um, he's not holding to his end or his part. I need something to substantiate what's the agreement. What was, what was the agreement to his part? What was he supposed to do? Well, it wasn't nothing written or nothing. It wasn't nothing we verbally uh, agreed on, but that thing's stupid. He know. Where I can take that? What court I can take that to? Why not? Why I can't take it to a court? That's all it is. So that, because what, what, what typically probably has happened, this is something I came up with on my own, and they should never agree to it whatsoever. So therefore, I don't have a, what they call a leg to stand on. And what happens with us a lot of times, we go and we want to call, which is call on Yahuwah, about certain things that we look for him to do. I don't have an agreement with you. I never made that agreement with you. So, you know, you, you, you really come into looking at uh, <clears throat> how important it is to make sure you have something to hold to. Even what they use when you go to court, they look for evidence. In a criminal case, you don't believe what they try to, they try to secure is evidence. Evidence are used to bring the substantiated case being brought against a person. You need to get it, whether it's audio, video, whether it's fingerprints, whether it's something you touch or handle or something you use in in the, uh, in the procuring of whatever it was you've done. I mean, all these things are critical. So you're trying to come in now and you're trying to say you have something with him. The only problem I got with it is it's just something you're saying. We don't see, you don't see your agreement with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I, remember, um, I remember I was 13. I, was, uh, I, used, to, I used to date Kim Fields. The only problem was she didn't know nothing about it. But I had the pitch and everything. And she used to look at me every time I looked. She, I said, that's what I'm, she was my girlfriend because she used to I'd look at the pitch. And she used to look at me. I said, that's my girlfriend. Now, if you'd have asked her about it, it was going to be a problem. Because everything I had, how many, everybody had, who, who you had? Come on, nobody else ain't did this? 
Then, but, but on the problem was, these people don't know you. And if you see these people, like people had a favorite star team. You, you watch them, so you feel like you know them. These folks say, these folks, I don't know you. They get security, get you. You're like, oh, we know these folks. I don't know you. What are you doing? You're a stranger. That's funny, isn't it? Because that's amazing. That's what you said about us. I don't know you. Everything that you have that you're saying uh, in this relationship, that's only been you. So you said, well, he's been working for me, though, and things, things seem to have been working for me. A lot of times what will happen, you have been a recipient of something he does for a large group, and that's how things fall on you. Just like when Musha told his brother-in-law about going with him. He said, if you go with us, because he said, we, I need you to be our own, our eyes. Because when Yasharal came out, they didn't know where they were going. He asked them. He said, you, if you stay with us and you go with us, then whatever two things fall on us, he said, it's going to fall on you. So that meant his brother-in-law was saved, right? So could his brother-in-law get those saved two things if he, didn't want, if he wasn't with them? Hello? <laughs> See what I'm saying? See, he could have went and said, look at he working it out for me. The Lord is working in my life. Look at it. He is blessing me. That's because you with them. This ain't something you have that I made an agreement with you on. It's that since you among the fold, when I do for the fold, it's just quite natural. I'm going to feed what's with them. But I don't actually have an agreement with you. Y'all understand that? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. What, I, don't, I just want you to be prepared. So now with these uh, relators, somebody said, well, I feel like I got one because he, see, this the problem. You feel like you got one. So you, you weren't never sure about it anyway, were you? See if that's all I'm thinking. Ooh, Allah Shamu. Ooh. Hold this though. Mm, no. Hold it though. We, I not call. We'll come back to it. Fifteen, probably about eighteen. Hold that though. So I'm not thinking about now. All our hot dog marine. They call Deuteronomy. Five and one. Ooh, Allah Shemut, 15, 18. I'm sorry. Say that 15, 18. All I have done bring five and one. Oh my God. All right, listen. Then Musha, Yahweh to all Yasharal and said to them, Shama, O Yasharal, the statutes and the ordinance which I am speaking today in your hearing that you may lament them and observe to do them. Hold on. What you say? Then Musha, what did he do? He yakra, which is mean he called. Whenever you put the, the yah in front, that means he called. If you put kara, that just called. All right. <clears throat> kara is called. The Q-A-R-A is called. When you put the Y-A in front of yakra, then you're saying he called. So it wasn't no difference. So that's why it's letting you know who did it. Y'all got it? So it's letting you know that Musha called to all Yasharal. And what did he say? And said to them, Shama O Yasharal. What he told the Canaanites to do? Shama O Yasharal. And the Hittites. Shama O Yasharal. The Jebusites. Shama O Yasharal. And the Amorites. Shama O Yasharal. Similar hand. All right. Hold on, Ryan throw it up out of you. Who you who, who we feel like got that? You or Ryan? Who we feel like got it? Y'all probably got it. Come tell me what your answer is. Let me see. Well, I'm going to get your answer. Let me just say. All right. You saw what he said, Ryan? That tight. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> My brother Jack called. <laughs> come on. Why you asking me to come tell you for two? He ain't got to tell you. You can't they get your answer. Oh, he didn't. <clears throat> he know what you said. How long the host up? <laughs> How many of y'all heard what he just told me? Bryce couldn't even see him. He's talking about we got the same answer. How did the same out? Let me hear what it is. Come on. Yeah. I know what I'm joking. I ain't got no. No, no, exactly. All right, Ryan, what you got? Yahushua. Exactly. Same answer. That's when, when Yahushua <clears> said, <throat> then said he to the Yahoo deem that a man don't him. See, if you were there and you didn't believe, I wouldn't talk to you anyway. That's right. That's what he told me in the eighth chapter, about the 32nd chapter of the book of Yahukanan, they called John. Mm -hmm. He said this, said then, said Yahushua, the old Yahudim, who are mine. 
So if you were there and you said, well, I ain't Yahudin, what, I wasn't talking to you anyway. You That's said, right. I believe it. I'm, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Yahudin. If you ain't believe and you were Yahudin, I wasn't talking to you. You see what I'm saying? So it's important to know that he's talking. If somebody said that to him, oh, say, say that, what did he say? What did he say now? If you weren't Yashara, I wasn't even talking to you. He's talking to Yashara. Let's see why. How about that? Let's see. Shama or Yashara, the statues Which, and what the ordinances. That, what's the, what I told y'all Shama was, hand. Hey. All right, what you got? Him with the tent. What you, what you going to say? Same thing. Anybody had anything else I told y'all? What you got? Who? <laughs> Come on, John. Put another check by your dad now. Ooh, boy, your dad is stacking them up today, ain't it? <laughs> so now, that, so now <clears throat> we, we, we're looking. What you going to say? That's right here, intelligent. So that's a difference. And that right, make sure we're here. Either, either or, we're here with the intent to do. We want to hear with an intelligence, okay? So let's see what happens. Let my friend, let's look up what intelligent is. How about that? When our young people make sure we clear in there. Not only just them, us as well. Because a lot of times we know things by conversation. You know, you might know by reaction, I think, but you don't really know the in depth of a meaning sometimes. Because this word we looked up, you know, because of how it's used, you kind of know. But when you look at it, you say, hmm, I never looked at it in that sense. Y'all got it? Intelligent. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skill. That's different. So you're hearing so you can apply it and be able to be skillful when you do it. That makes a difference. I never would have thought that. Did y'all, how many of y'all already knew that? Well, maybe not tired, like maybe written the way it is, but did that make a difference for y'all really looking at the definition? So you're hearing, so you're actually, the ability to acquire and conjunction, apply knowledge. That's a different, say this, you can have knowledge, but you don't know how to use it, right? Let's see that, ham. Well, I ain't gonna ask you that. Y'all, I'm gonna show you something. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skill. Now, all this just kind of all correlate together. Y'all got it? Knowledge is a range of information. So you'll listen so you can acquire that information. So you can apply that information, y'all know, and you know how to, and you know how to use the information. That's the whole key. Just think of this: this is something that the average religion lacks. They give, think about, it. they give, they can give you a, like you go to a lot of places. They're big on words and giving a lot of words and a lot of information. Do you know how to apply it? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I see something. Uh, that's good. To look at, um, um, let's see if that's um, Olive Shamwal. 17, 17, 22. Then Yahuwah will come back in. How about that? Oh. Allah. Allah. Try 18. Let me see. I might want to read that. All right, listen. Today. Is it chapter 18 or? 17. Yes, verse sir. 18. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. Listen. And you shall bring these 10 cuts of cheese to the commander of their thousand and look into the 16, welfare. 16, 18. Let's see what I want. Mm -mm, might be 17. 17, no, jump down 22. 17, 22. Well, 17, come on down about 22. Listen, I actually want down, but since we're here, I want to try to see if we can, how we'll correlate this together. Come on. Then Daoud gave his goods from him into the hand of storekeeper and ran to the Sabo and came and asked his Akim of their welfare. As he was talking with them, behold, the east between two, the Philistine from Goth, whose Shem was Goliath, was coming up from the Saboth of the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And he spoke according to these Dabarim, mm -hmm. and Daoud Shammah them. When yeah. all the Anashim of Yasharal saw the Ish, they fled from him and were greatly afraid. Y'all see that? So, da so it told you that Daoud Shammah. So what are we looking at? What definition were you looking at? It's tight. He listen with intelligence, so he will listen, so he can acquire, 
So he knew how to have it. When he took knowledge of it, so he knew how to apply a certain skill set to it. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. Because here he's looking at something has to be applied. If I tell you, you know, I right, go to the store, I need you to go and I need you to give me some bread, I need you to give me some water, give me whatever it is to get it. So you listen, so you're trying to make a list in your mind, then you got, you're trying to configure how much money I'm going to need. Because with this skill, I'm listening, but if I don't have the ability to know what the objects are that I'm purchasing or the amount, I'm still going to come into failure. So he's listening to what's going on so he know what what needs to go with this. What do I need to apply? What skill level needs to be used with what he's saying? Let's see what happens. The Anashim of Yasharal said, have you seen this Ish who is coming up? Mm -hmm. Surely he is coming up to the fire, Yasharal. Mm -hmm. Which and is to speak, to go against, the fire to go against. Y'all kids know what that means. Come on. Parents and it shall be. The opposite. Uh huh. And it shall be that the Malak shall enrich the Ish who kills him with great riches and shall give him his bath and make his Abba Beth free in Yasharal. You see that? It's going to be that whoever do it, he's going to give him his daughter and he's going to um, enrich the man and he's going to he make his house free in Goliath. And I mean, I'm sorry, in Yasharal. So you can see that had this so apparently from this, you know, there's a debt acquired with having something in Yasharal. He said, the man that come and slay that, he said, I'm gonna make this man free. Mm. I'm gonna free him from this and I'm gonna enrich him. Right. These are things we look at with Yahushua. He's talking about when you know the truth, you ain't gonna believe what the Make Amai you free. Hmm? Make you free. So Daoud's gotta listen with intelligence. I'm this so he look, this is something I'm trying to acquire. I've been in debt all my life. Think about Qatar. Qatar got you in debt. <laughs> That's right. And if you can listen intelligent and take this knowledge, the da'ath, which is the knowledge, and if you learn how to apply it and, and use a certain skill level, you can, you can free yourself from it. So Da'ud is listening with, he's definitely listening with intelligence. He's also listening with the intent to do this. Because all of this, I, first, I ain't married. I definitely ain't got no money. I <laughs> said, so what, what I need to do? Y'all got a man said, man, I'll give you a million dollars. You listen, what, what I need to do? I, how many of y'all can use a million dollars? Well, you need to be listening intelligent. Isn't that right? Everything that he's offering a thing, no doubt, this man trying to acquire. So I guess if salvation ain't something you're trying to acquire, how much effort you gonna put in what you're hearing? See, it's not a need. But he's listening because he's looking at, okay, let me see where we're going with this. Come on. Then Daoud spoke to the Anashim who were standing by him, uh -huh. saying, what shall be done for the Ish who kills this Philistine mm -hmm, and takes yeah. him away and takes away the reproach from Yasharal? Y'all see what happened? Come on. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the Saboth or the Kai Alahim? Mm -hmm. So, so listen what Dao was willing to do. This one just self-involved, but the purpose <clears throat> of him doing it and enriching himself was doing a work for us. That's right. See, a lot of time while we look at the things you're trying to obtain, why you don't get them, everything for you. That's right. It, let's go. He was looking now. What he was looking to obtain was for himself. But at the same time, he was looking at the removing of. That's right. Reproach is a disgrace. That man came up and he was defined, which means he was going to do, he was going to speak again. And he was looking at who's going to take away this reproach? Who's going to take away the stain? Who's going to take away the disgrace, the humiliation from us? See, this is what Yahushua came to do. This is why they want to know about whose son was Dao, whose son was Yahushua. Because once we, once we validated whose son he was, who been, the son typically carried the same traits as the father. When you go to the doctor, what they ask you, um, write down the history of your nephew, your medical history, your neighbors. What, what they should have for your neighbor, they live right in the neighborhood with you. Write down the folk that went to elementary you in high school. What the hell? Because <laughs> that, that's not a relation. But when I go and trace back from your father and your father's father and your mother and your mother's mother, then this gives me an idea how far, how long this has been going. <clears throat> so guess what? We can't out what they want to know about. He want to ask them for about Yahushua. Whose son was it? Because mm. when we go back and start tracing back lineage, we can see this behavior that he's going to exemplify. This behavior, this trait been in his fathers ever since. Look at Abraham. He was the Ben of Abraham too. He, Cause he told, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my union. Right. And he was glad. That's right. what he said. They told, they said, they said you, you seen, you seen Abraham? They told him he wasn't even fifty years old. Right. Why hands? Y'all gonna let? Hold on, hold on, stop. Oh, watch out, huh? Yahushua Hamashiach. I don't know where I kept that from. It was, a, it was a moment. That man got up and hollered that thing out him one time. Man, everybody started hitting the ground. We didn't know what happened. <laughs> we thought he was gonna call something down. He said, "No, that's how I agree." <laughs> Go ahead. Uh huh. Yeah. 
50 years old. They're between 30 and 50. Yeah. People don't realize, too, in the Kohan at the 50, he really had to, he had to be coming on down from out of that position, Kohan. You're right. Most of y'all wouldn't know that. That's why they asked him about him not being 50 years old. They were typically looking at age range of when you're doing certain acts. They weren't just allowing people, like these people think people just doing stuff. They had age ranges when people do certain things. Okay? Come on. The arm um, answered him in according with this debar, mm -hmm. saying, Thus it shall be done for the each who kills him. Now, Eliab, his oldest ox, Shama, when he spoke to the Anashim, mm -hmm. in Eliab's anger, burned against Daoud, and he said, Why is it you have come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep yeah. in Bamadbar? I know your insolence and the Rosha in your lob, mm -hmm. for you have come down that you, that you see the battle. And you ain't believe it. This is the same thing you find in ridicule or the Zakanin, which the elders and the Kohanin, how they criticized Yahushua. That's right. When he came out. That's how they did. They were trying to criticize. That's right. People try to find fault. All he was trying to do, he was just trying to take the disdain off of us. That's right. That's all he was trying to do. That's why he came out. He had to conquer Mut. See, a lot of things we don't look at. This man had to operate in two capacities. He had to walk, work from a rotten capacity, which is spiritual. Then he had to work from the from the from the basal, the flesh. So it was hard for us to believe a lot of things he was saying rotten because what knoweth a man? Things of a man. How much we know about the rock? Nothing. How much you know about the wind? It blows. Just some that. What? How much you know about the wind? <laughs> you feel it? And, if, and, and that's typical. We agree. So a lot of things he tried to explain us through Agni. How much could we actually grasp? We couldn't. That's about as much as we know about the wind. It turn. It'll go this way, <coughs> that way, that way. That's not enough information. So we need to know things about him from the Basar, because we knew about the things of a man. So when he came, he said, "I'm the man of Dawu." What do we know about Dawu? We knew about a parent, and we knew he was a fighter. And we knew when you put something in hand, he looked at, nobody going to take it from him either. Let's see what he told him. How about that? Let's yes, sir. But Dawu said, what have I done now? Hmm. Was it not but a debar? Then he turned away from him to another and said, according to the same debar. That's all he had. Now he went at it for what have I done now? Yahushua tried to add it. He, does this also offend you? Meaning what? You've been pissed off by every time I say something, something gets you off. And that's all he's saying. What have I done now? Every time I try to help, I get criticized, ridiculed. Listen. Then he turned away from him to another and said, according to the same Debar. He asked him the same thing. Come on. And the arm um, answered a Debar like the first Debar. They answered the same thing. Everybody criticized him. Come on. When the Dabarim, which Dau spoke, were Shama, they were told before Shaul, and he sent for him. Uh-oh, you see that? Then the Malachna sent for him now, the emperor. That's amazing. Because, you know, they took Yahushua the pilot, Pelotus. That's right. Because of what he had been saying. That's right. You see the premise? The same premise is him. That's, why he, that's how, he wound up going to, how he went to Pelotus, who they called Pilate. Because they heard his words. They said, this man said he able to destroy the Mashkan and build it back in three Yamin. This man said he'd have been, he said he'd have been uh, Allahim. So all these things, his words wind up bringing him before the Malak. Look at Daoud, found the same trait. Listen. Daoud said to Shaul, mm -hmm. let no each lob fail on account of him. Mm -hmm. Your Abad shall go and fight with this Philistine. Mm -hmm. Come on. Then Shaul said to Daoud, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Mm -hmm. For you are but a youth, while he has been a each of war from his youth. Uh-huh. But Daoud said to Shaul, your Abad has been a Ra'a to his, to his Abba among the sheep. See that? He said, I've been a shepherd among sheep. What happened? When a Ari or a bear came and took a lamb from the Adah, I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. Mm -hmm. And when he came up against me, I like seized Mushaf, him. That's what we knew Mushafa. He rescued. Did y'all know that? One, yeah, that's what his name, rescue. That's what he's trying to tell you. This is the same trait that Musha had. That's what he did. When he seen one of, one of us being attacked by one of Mizraim, that's what he told you. He looked on the affliction. He saw one of them being attacked. He saw, he saw Ari attacking one. And what he told you he did to the Mizraim? 
He said, mm -hmm. I and then what did he do? He said, I buried him in the sand. That's right. That's, so you start looking, because they were looking at comparing and trying to let you know about Musha. I do the same thing. He said, if I see somebody come and take one, he said, I'm going out after, and I'm on the attack. I ain't coming asking for nothing. He said, I'm attacking them. Mm -hmm. That's Musha didn't ask him. He asked the Mizraite nothing. When he saw two our king going, he asked them questions. That's right. That's when right. When he saw Mizraite take him, he said, ain't nothing to ask. That's right. I defend at that point. Listen, these are traits. Yes, sir. Characteristics you're supposed to simplify. Come on. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and uh -huh. struck him and killed him. Mm -hmm. Your Abad has killed both an Ari and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. You see that? He come up against him. He said, I, he said listen, I defend you like being a rob. He said, when he come up against him, he said, I'll kill him. He said, that's what I'll do. Come on. Since he has taunted the Saboth of the Kai Alahim, mm -hmm. and Daoud said, Yahuwah, who delivered me from the paw of the Ari and from the paw of the bear, he shall deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Yeah. And Shaul said to Daoud, Go, to and may Yahuwah be with you. You think, you think Daoud heard him when he said that? Y'all believe he heard him when he told him? He, told him, he said, Go, and Yahuwah be. He heard him? Yes, sir. Let's see. Then Shaul, Shaul clothed Daoud with his armor and put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with a coat of mail. Mm-hmm. Daoud girded the, his sword over his armor and tried to halak, mm -hmm. for he had not tested them. Mm -hmm. So Daoud said to Shaul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. And Daoud took them off. See that? He looked at, I don't know how to apply these. That's Except right. For me, this is what you gave me. I don't know how to apply it, so I wouldn't try to use it. That's right. You know what a person do? I'm going out by faith. That's what I'm going to do. And go out and get that thing ran straight through your throat. That's right. See, it's a skill set. You can hear something, you still, I, I was trying to get a point on this because you hear something, I mean, you know how to apply it. That's right. He just gave him something and put it on it. He didn't tell him, throw it down and say, I put it on you. I'll That's show right. you how it go. And, and, and the sword, he didn't throw it on his back somewhere or tie it around his leg. He put it on for him, everything he He looked at it and realized, I don't know how to use this. That's stuff. right. That's right. It don't matter what you told me. You didn't gave it to him, but I don't know how to use it. So that's the purpose of why we're here. We're trying to learn how to how to accurately apply what we have, you know, or, or accurately apply what we're getting. And a lot of times you can have information, but if you don't know how to dispense it back out or you don't know how to use it where it's a benefit to you, it's still useless. Mm -hmm. Y'all got it. That's why he, it don't make sense to take it because I don't know how to use it. These are the things we sit back and we start trying to consider when you're looking at the debar. Do you really know how to use it? Taking it in the knowledge, do you know how to apply it when situations come up? That right, and you got to be able to, again, our theme is, again, nigga, give me everything you got or I'm going to kill you. Mm. And you got to decide what you're trying to hold on to. Hello? So when we see Yahushua, because we understood him more from the flesh, the basal, than we did from the ruah, it was so important to have a history or have knowledge of people who he came, who he descended from. Right. Abraham took away the reproach and took away the stain when it came down to Luke, who they call Lot. When they came in, they took him, let's see, the 14th chapter... 13, 14, 13, 14, 11, Barashit. Let me see that what I want. Barashit. They call it Genesis. 14, 11. Let's see something. Let's see what happened. Listen. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Amorah and all that, their then, food. Then they took all the goods, all the substance of Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened? And all their food and, and departed. All their food, huh? And, and their food and departed. Mm -hmm. They took loot, Abram's ox, Ben, and his that? possessions his and his departed. Brother's, his brother's son. They took him too. They took his brother's son. Listen. For he was living in Sodom. Because he was living in Sodom. Then a fugitive came and told Abram the Abari. Somebody who got away came back and told Abraham the Abari. Now he was living by the oaks of Mamre, the Amorite, mm -hmm. Ak of Ascol, and Ak of Anur. And they had a berith with Abram. See that? Y'all see what they did? They had a league with him. 
You see how the national bas you see like the national uh, baseball league. Y'all see how they go play the Chinese? You see, they go to they go to Mexico and they play the Mexicans too. I wonder why they don't play them. Cause they're not in their league. They're not in the same league. That's why they don't play with them. But that don't make sense. Look like all I'm being played together. See, we have an agreement. And because we have an agreement, we don't play with people outside. Now, we might go play in Mexico, but I assure you we're going to be playing each other. Y'all got it? We might play in China, but we're going to be playing people in our league. Y'all understand that? So these people had an agreement with him. Let's see what a league is. How about that? I think on um, the King James Version, it said they, they made confederate. Mm -hmm. See, confederate ain't nothing but a league. When people say they're the confederate, most people, that means they racist. Because you don't know no different. They just teach you stuff. They associate white people, the Confederate flag, so you automatically believe Confederate means everything racist. It just means they had an agreement. That's why they call themselves the Confederate States, because they all had a league together. See the difference? But what, how many of y'all, when you heard Confederate, you automatically associate racist? That's what you're supposed to do. Because so, you got to look at that. How did they give you the word? The only way you heard, whoever used Confederate other than that? Confederate flag. Them Confederate rednecks, them old racist Confederate states. So they associate things in a way sometimes it hurts your understanding about things. Y'all got it? That's why we try to get the banal, the understanding that come from Allahim. Because a lot of things we made a fear and a threat does is actually not. It's just you don't have enough knowledge about it. Let's look at Confederate. Oh, it's amazing. Confederate. What did it mean? Lee. Ooh, ain't that some Confederate? Lee. Mm -hmm. What happened? Oh, this is a league. I seen Confederate too. We look at Confederate first. Here, Confederate. It will come out. Joined by an agreement or a treaty. That's what Confederate is. Okay. Joined by an agreement or a treaty. Let's see what league is. A collection of people, countries, or groups that combine for a particular purpose, typically mutual protection or cooperation. Same thing, Confederate. Why you think the Confederate? So the North were fighting with the West. Who were they fighting with? Confederate. South. The Confederate state, that's all they were. They were just a group of state. They were fighting together like a league. They basically all playing about the same way. That's all they were doing. They tell you a league, basically, what the Confederate was doing. Y'all all right? I don't know. Y'all don't look like y'all too happy now. I mean, because I'm telling you, a lot of times you, it, it, it hurts us. Because we don't know enough a lot of time about things, so we tend to fight a lot of things. I've been guilty of you fight a lot of things because the fear is there because of what you had happen to you. Justin said every time, he says it's bad, um, and it's white people fight, fall. Because of what they've done, it'll make you fight so many things versus really just sitting back and kind of looking at things a little more objectively than what you do. Because it is, a lot of times they don't let words fear them and fight them. We quick to want to, anything close, you said water, you call me nigga? you like, because water's a word for nigga. you like, hold on a minute. Don't call me water. Don't call me all oh, that nigga. Oh, it's, it's, think about it. We do. We'll have so much of fear of fight for things a lot of time, and that's really not your fight. <coughs> a lot of things, you, you let it be your fight. And now I appreciate you who are for, account, for allowing us to sit down and take the fear out of things. All we got to do is take time, just look at them and just see what it means. So you can see whether or not you're accurate or not. How, how, how bad or how hard is it just look? Let's just see if you're right. Why would you want to know if you're right? You know what I'm saying? I just, I just, you know, I don't know, I know it was people, Christian, they said, see, if you do stuff like this right here, you ain't even trying to be saved. This, there's no way you're trying to be saved because you, you're trying to preach the dictionary. This is the part that's dumb. Every word in the Bible is in the dictionary. It is a collection of dictionary words. But if you look up the dictionary, you look up what a word it means, God ain't even in it. The spirit gone. Come you read, I told you they had a preacher one time, he taught, um, um, he was at a, a group I was at, uh, a, a movement I used to be with one time, and he used to teach, they had, they had a place in Tennessee, other places, and he would tell, sometimes he would tell, he said all them preachers now were disobedient. He said all of them. He said everyone, he said disobedient, man. He said Paul said whatever state you in, you supposed to be content. So everyone that went to Tennessee, to, yeah, <coughs> listen, everyone that went to Tennessee to preach and went to them other states, he said they weren't, they weren't obeying the Bible. Because whatever, he didn't understand <laughs> The state that he puts you in, you know what I'm saying? Learn how to be, you know, learn how to be to a point the way I'm good if this is where he wants me to be. I'm talking in my life, financially, 
you know what I'm saying, whatever it might be. This man took it. If you went outside and crossed Georgia line, whatever, say, you just sin. <laughs> so you know how bad this hurts him? He could be honest. It hurts you because you just condemn everybody else. Mm -hmm. You just also everybody because you say left state had another one. He would read it. it was talking about the, the bishop. It was saying a bishop not supposed to be a striker. And he was talking about he's all he got. He said, they're not bishop. I don't know picket line. <laughs> he said, the Bible said he ain't supposed to. Yeah, he said, the bishop ain't supposed to be no striker. So he said, he, yeah, because he'll hit folk too. So he used it. He just switched and said, if they was on that picket line, he's all, he said this over. He said, he ain't no bishop. <laughs> no bishop got no bin on no picket line. <laughs> you know what you know, you're saying? Like, goodness. But you know, it is funny. But you know what the problem is? What hurts him, what hurt him, is the same thing that hurt us. Yeah. Because we don't look, you don't know. Now you lead things to assumption. It's so easy to just sit down and say, well, let's just find out what it is. Mm -hmm. And we can always go look at the Aubrey, how it's used. They'll have a different word, but a lot of them come back to the same meaning, but you can kind of get a, a gist of what's going on so you can process it properly. That's just saying, getting the knowledge and then knowing how to apply it. Now, they got the knowledge. It said a bishop ain't supposed to be a, 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 a striker, but he lacks something inside that knowledge, so he can't accurately apply it. And he's, he's associated to the wrong behavior. And that's what we'll do a lot of times. When he told us in the fifth chapter of the book of Yeshayahu, he said, warn them that call to Rosham. He said, call good wrong or, or, or evil and call evil good. And, you know, and this is what you're saying. Who's going to walk up and go, oh, the light on. This is bad. This is evil. This, no. Typically, this is how people mess up. This is because they think they're smart. He's trying to get you to understand when you look at it because you lack a certain knowledge skill, you really calling the wrong thing something that's not. Why you, what you think they were calling Yahushua? They told him he was Beelzebub. Beelzebub, yep. This was a deity of another gui. Mm -hmm. Now, was Yahushua, was he Beelzebub? No. No, he was the Ben of Allahim. But he already told you that. Woe to them, destruction of them that call right wrong. Mm -hmm. And call wrong right. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll do that. People will grade something and call it wrong, and you lack something. Mm -hmm. He said, this is equivalent. You putting bitter for sweet and right. sweet for bitter. Right. We don't get it right. We all done. That's right. We're going to perish. Yes, sir. You know what? I'm telling you, this ignorance has hurt us. It's hurt years. us. That's right. It, ain't just, it hadn't just hurt us. It's, I'm talking about it hurt all, the whole, all the nation because we hadn't sat down and been honest enough to sit back and say, I don't know. Let me investigate and see. Let me find. I know what my, I told you, I had a former pastor, his, his pastor used to tell him, if folks ask, listen, you got to ask him a question, not an answer. That man put him out, what did it what it say? And you, you had to read it, read it, read it. He said, yeah, but what did it say? <laughs> That's what it meant. Mm -hmm. He told me that stuff, that what you say? I looked, I said, I make sure I never do it. I said, you just punk them people out their question. What you talking about? I said, I just look. I said, wow. Instead of saying, let me look at that and I'll get back with you. Ain't no shame in that. I don't know. I got to look at it. Instead, he cut you down and make you feel stupid. And then the folk look at you like, you so stupid. The man done told you what to say. Read the thing. And they don't know either. <laughs> now everybody make you feel stupid and nobody know. All them sitting there stupid saying, Bishop got him. Mm -hmm. Bishop told her, and you, realize, you ain't told them nothing. Just tell the people you don't know. That's let me, right. Let me get back with you. You just punked them out and made the folk feel like now they're going to burn, but they were burning hell because the man just told you what it say. Uh, it say, say, say. That's what it meant. Um, Bishop, what it say? You thinking, I got to cut this off. This is real <laughs> bad right now. And you think, he thinking, they thinking, man, Bishop got him. You know what I'm saying? Bishop be, uh, so now nobody, anybody got any questions? Who got a question after that? Anybody that got a letter they want me to read? <laughs> you heard everybody going to die. The dog finna die. The dog got worms. You're like, I don't want you reading that for me. I'm, I ain't got no question. So now you got all these people following who don't know what they're doing, who's left to interpretation. That's, 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 that's dangerous because this your soul. You got to understand because it's your soul. If knowledge, intelligence is what we find intelligent to be, and you're supposed to listen to intelligence so you can get a range of information so you can apply it, that you will have a skill set. Being saved is a skill set. <coughs> it's a skill set. Because think about it. How do I avoid fornication? How do I beat it? Uh-uh. I, I close my eye to pray. You close your eye, you have me saved. See, it's a skill set. How do I avoid it? Oh, you said just don't do it. That's not no answer. It's a skill set to get yourself out of the situation. And when you heard it with, and what people do, 
people don't confess because they say, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to actually apply. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Different. So that's the whole goal of what we're trying to do. Not just get a whole bunch of words mm. and meaning and definition. We're trying to acquire a skill set so we can con so we can conquer it. Mm. That's what Yahushua was doing. So because we knew him because of the Basar, and he knew he tried to explain the thing that we were out there, we couldn't get it. He knew these people not gonna get it. I'm gonna talk to these people constantly. Even Shaul said, when I came, he said, when I spoke to you, he said, I came unto you calling. He said, I didn't come to you, Rodney. He realized, he said, all I'm going to do is lose the people because I'm talking to them about something. They can't grasp the concept of it. But if I talk to them calling, you know how things work. Typically, we talked about before, the son followed the trade of the father. If the father was a carpenter, guess what the son was going to be? Plumber. He's going to be a carpenter, too. He's going to be a builder. That's why Yahushua told her, upon this rock, what are you going to do to the <clears throat> And that, that, you, first of all, what, why am I supposed to believe you're going to build something? Why are we supposed to believe he was going to build something? Wow. See, we knew from the fact. We, when he said he was going to build his other house in Shamaim, we, we were believing this? This rule Agni. We don't understand what you're talking about. This is nonsense. We can't process it, but we know your father is a carpenter. And you're saying you're going to build your house. A son is going to know it because he follows the direction, he follows the toolage, he follows the pattern of the father. That makes sense that you're going to build your house. And when a man builds his house, he told you how a man build a house. On a rock. Why? Come on, I need to check. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> he just hollered out something. He looked at this. They were bad. He was talking. He was right here. All I said, I said, I said what I My brother, listen, he called him on. He said, listen. You too easy on them people. He said, he told my brother, he said, you let a lot of stuff going. I wouldn't let go on to him. He said, folk be answering stuff, and I had their eye going like this. I said, I said, you right, bro. I'm, I'm getting too easy on it, folk. Goodness, bro. One more check. Yeah, one more check, too. So now we're looking at how important it is that how we understood him. And I appreciate the fact that Yahuwah allowed him to come and have so many corner attributes. Because we was like, since we were fighting a Ruachni warfare, something, again, we never understood. It was important to let him come in the flesh since we understood the flesh, since we're in the flesh. Watch him conquer and do things, learn a pattern of history of how things work from people he traded out from, that he came out, you know, issued out from, that we can see this is very much plausible. This can happen. Looking at, here's the Ben of Dao. We knew Dao for being a warrior. We knew Dao for being a man after... So this man talked about having a heart for the Abba. But Abba, a lot of things, we could understand it because we could go back and read and watch what Dawood da da told him when he came to building Alahim Beth. Listen, Alahim told him, he said, you won't build it. He said, you're being a build it. So all these things made sense. He stopped him. He told him, he said, you won't build it. He said, your hands full of Dawood. His hands were full because Dawood was a fighter. He was a warrior. He was a killer. He said, I'm not going to let you build my house. I'm going to let your Ben do it. So when he came on the scene and told her he would have been a Daoud and he was going to build a house, it's like, interesting. Very interesting this happened. These patterns are so likely. You see what I'm saying? That he was going to set this son up and this son, he was going to allow him to be able to do that. He did this to Daoud. I'm not letting you do it. The cup. So when we go back and look at symbolism. I'm not going to let you build it. Daoud can see this and I already know what this means. I'm going to let you. Not at all. This don't mean keep coming. This mean get back. Don't try it, right? And he knew it. He said, but you're being. I'm going to allow him. I'm going to let him. Y'all get it? I'm going to allow him to be able to do this. So he came to the scene and told he was going to build it. He told you when a man build a house, he built upon a where? On a sewer, a rock. For what happened? Wind, Kadeem, and a storm beat upon it. It went what? This was natural. That's how you built. He said, a man going to build, this is how he's going to build. He said, he's going to build it, he going to build it against obstacles. He's going to build it because he's already putting in mind, these are the things that's going to come that's going to try to take this house. Right, right. What, we, what we had, what the last two nights come? Right. And when? <laughs> so how houses were built? Your house fell? Don't y'all know when they built their house, they built it to a certain participation of wind, to a certain amount of water. It can resist coming, because rain is coming, hitting the house. It can start breaking away the water. So the mortar got to be mixed problem. That's why he got on, 
um, your cars are called, and who they call it, he said they dobbed the house. He, he said when something hit that thing, it's coming down. So now when you build, you, build, you pretty much construct that certain thing, like in Florida. They, you know how they, how they build them skyscraper houses in Florida, Boston? Hold on, hold on. I don't need to use that. I'm telling you, you know the, the big, tall houses they, they build out in Florida? You seen them, big sky? You ain't seen them. Who else from Florida? You seen the, the skyscraper house? Why they don't build skyscraper houses? Hurricane. It won't stand. They don't, they don't build houses like that. It don't work. All this is with anticipation. They anticipate that these things are coming, going to happen. So you build toward anticipation. Okay. So here I am, one get say, my struggle with women, alcohol, cigarettes. I'm just naming some stuff. What am I say? Just say homosexual, anybody. Just, so how, how I need to build? I need to build where the one that cracks so sissy can get under it. I'm anticipating for that behavior to try to come back. I'm anticipating the cigarette. I'm anticipating. So I got to anticipate this. All this is in anticipation. That's it. It might never come. I can, because Yahushua told you, he said the gates of Sheol ain't going to come against it. So how did he build it? If he told me constantly how I need to build my house, on a rock, on a sewer, so the foundation solid, so the wind and the storm, that's natural. How do I need to build my best with yours? I got to anticipate alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, lusting, fornication, adultery. I got to build toward that. So when it comes, the house don't fall. That's why I had to tell us how to build it. Now I transfer it ruach me. I can, that house I got over here can fall from it. I ain't going to go to Sheol. If this house falls, I'm going to Sheol. See, people put more in their corner building, they're going to put it in the rotten. Y'all got what I'm saying? So everything he came to show us made so much sense when we processed the type of person he was. Like him talking about when a sheep was taken. And things come from him being a ray or a ray or a raim. I'm sorry, right, well, a ra or a shepherd. Raim would be plural for shepherds. Let's look at some of them. See that, um, your Ukanon 17, see that about five. Probably do one first, since I said, let's find who you're talking to. What we're going on there, Ty, get our subject matter. Your Ukana, they call it John 17. I thought I said five. Let me see one. Listen. He spoke these things, then he lifted up his own toward the Shamayim and he said. He spoke these things, closed his eyes, and started praying. Lifted up his own toward the Shamayim and said. I be, the hour has come. You can, lift, you can keep your head down too when you pull out. Who know what that, what that symbolizes? Submission. And who? You symbolize who? Your father? No, uh, no, Yasharal did that. And whether he said symbolize your father when you look down, that's not, that's not um, true in that aspect. What it symbolize for shame? He even told him one time how to. Uh, in, the, in our tour, Rebecca, they talked about how they had their head down because of shame. They had committed a shame. They were talking to us. They put their head down. They bowed their head for shame. They were too shame to even look up. See what I'm saying? That, and it happens. You need to recognize it's symbolism because of shame. Why do you think the people go and put their face down in the Adama? Shame. When they fell, because when, when, when Yasharal fell, like they took it a cursed thing, Yahushua lifted his eyes up. To, he did. He put, it, he put his face down the sand. He was down. He put dirt on his head for shame. He like this is the, he like the man we had been humiliated. Why are we raising up our faces? They understood. Y'all right? These are symbolism. These are expressions. You gotta start watching expression. That's how you understand things by expression. You don't understand that, do you? Because when Nakum Yah, who they call Nehemiah, when he went in, he was the Malak cupbearer, and he had seen some of those that had escaped, and he wanted to know the welfare, how they were doing. And the Ark told him, he said they're in great distress. He said the people that were left, he said they're in great distress. He told him how bad it was going, and he had to go and take the Malak his cup, and he went and take the Malak his cup, and he saw him, and he said, what is this? He said, you're not sick. He said, it's nothing but sorrow law. He could tell from expression. He never said nothing. He watched his expression, and he knew, you have, you're not sick. He told him, why wouldn't I be? He said, a place of my abode, a lot of waste. He had heard about how the city had been burned and had been torn down. 
He had heard how the people was in great affliction. He think, listen, you know what he wanted? He wanted letters. He asked for letters. Who know what he wanted? He wanted the letters for. To do what? He wanted letters <coughs> to go back. How many of y'all agree? He jumped out of one, two, three, four. Only four I see him right. As long as you're exactly right. That's he ain't right. gonna believe this. When Yahushua had come in to see the Abo and had saw what affliction we was in down here, Ryan, he needed letters. That's why I said the book. That's right. He couldn't come down here on his own. He needed letters to say he was coming. But see, I could, he couldn't tell you that in the Ruach, because you don't understand Ruach. Mm. You understand flesh, right? Right. So you need to know about knocking y'all. Right. We, when Yahushua heard what had happened to us and saw we was in great affliction right. and the place of the Abo lot waste, right. it broke his heart. That's right. And the only way to come back, he needed letters. Yes, sir. That's why we're reading them. That's right. So how did you know he came? How you know he came? Because it's some it's a some of your gut. Letters. We can't go. It, that's what he needed. He needed letters saying he was coming. Hello? Yes, sir. See, but all of this you understand was by the spirit? By the Ruach? Uh, it's a each. No, it's by the Basar. So now you're getting knowledge. Now it's how to apply the knowledge and being skillful with it. Y'all just like having the ability to use the knowledge you got. That makes the difference. A lot of people got knowledge, but they ain't got the skill of how to use it. Right. Y'all got it. So when you're reading, you can understand. Shaul said that you might understand his mystery. Mm -hmm. That whereby when you read, he said you might understand. Pick it up right quick. Third chapter, book of Ephesians, three and one. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. How many of y'all believe I got a good, I mean, honestly, believe I got a good skill level at doing what I do? Y'all ain't gonna believe why. It's for you. It ain't yes, for sir. Me. He would never get to me for me. It wouldn't make sense. What I'm gonna do with it for me? It's something because, you're right. It's because of us. <laughs> so tell it again. That's yes, right. sir. It's because of us. That, you know what? I, this is how I grade whether or not he would have. If he give it to me, it's only because he sees something with y'all. Right, right. See, you don't know how to grade. Y'all might look and say, man, Preach are pretty good at what they do. You don't realize, no, I'm not. It's because he see that for you. Mm. That is. I'm just telling the truth. He see that because of you. That's the truth. See that? It works together. That's how we all can judge and measure together. You said, man, I know he's working with preachers because what he's saying is lining up. And that's the book. And I know, you know what I said? I said, I know his people because he's only giving it to me because of you. He gave you who should never for himself. He told you I could do nothing to myself. He said, as the Father speaks, he said, that's what I do. In, in Euchanan 316, said Yahushua so a love, to, he also a heart to learn that he came down on his own. And he said, he gave. He said, I gave him. I gave him for the fact that the ransom that all you had to do was a mine. That whosoever followed the Torah and don't break one of these commandments. That's what they say, Justin. He said, whoever a mine on him. Should not perish. Can you believe what? So what about the folk that perish by the Torah? See that? He said that's what they live by, and that's what they're gonna die by. But I didn't set that for you. I said whoever mon on him, he said they'll be saved. Can you believe that? Listen, when Musha had talked with the arm, the people, the people murmured, they complained. Yahuwah got so angry with the people, he sent in venomous Nakash. Snakes that came in and bit the people. Bit the people. Because those people had murmured against the man. They had spoke against the man. That's the tour. You weren't supposed to. You know, the law, the tour taught you in the 23rd chapter of the book of U Allah Shemut. Actually, they called it probably about 22, 20. He said, You're not supposed to speak evil of the rule of your uh of your people. Did y'all know y'all? I know, no, no, no. You know you ain't supposed to say nothing evil about the people that rule over this. I I show y'all, you know, listen, just a man preacher, man, he's making me sick. You be like, man, I ain't got nothing to say with that. that they don't know that's tour. That tour, you not he said, he said, you're not supposed to speak Russia or the rule of your people. He said, neither you supposed to revile the Allahim. He said, you're not supposed to do that. These folks spoke against Musha a lot of times. Do y'all know according to law they were supposed to die? That's why he sent the venom and Nakashi in to bite them. You ain't gonna believe what happened. They broke the tour, that's why he sent them. He had Musha to go and take a bag of bread. He said, take a piece of bread, fashion it, and, and put it on a stick. And put it up, and whoever look on it, 
What was this? Law? That was con. They broke the law. That's why the Nakash came in to bite them. The law couldn't save them. There's not a law to save you when you broke the law. There's not a law. He told you, had there been a law that would have gave Kai, he said, I gave it to you. There wasn't a law to give you Kai. Not a law. They broke the tour. Once you break the tour, that's it. He said, take a brass piece of bread, form it into the shape of the Nakash that built them, and put it on a stick and put it up. He said, whoever look on it, he said, it lived. Was this con or was it law? So that's why we knew that Yahushua had to look like Adam. That's the only reason we knew it. Because he, he, he didn't tell him to take a stick and get a twig. No, he said form that, that brass into the same form that that snake was that built him. And put it on the stick. When Yahushua was up there, he looked just like Adam. Because that's how we fail. How did they die? By who? Well, that's on that. But at first, in the Vermont bar, we wouldn't have understood that, except they got bit by the serpent, and he told them to form a, a piece of brass into the same shape of the serpent, and it had to be the same color. So when they looked at it, when they looked at it, they were going to live. This was not Torah law. This was con, because the law had already took their life. The law killed them. So now this was coming on by Amunna that he was going to bring them back from the moot. That's how he's going to conjure us back up. It's by con, by favor. The law is what kill you. Make sense? Yes, see, a lot of time, well, see, in the operation of everything, and tour is important. So this, this, is, this, this is the problem I think um, most um, groups run into. Is the is trying to um, depict or not? I want to say depict. Trying to decipher and learn how to kind of properly use Torah and understood con. A lot of time they get tied up. So man, you ain't got to keep now. You ain't got to keep nothing. You ain't got to do nothing. Women can wear pants. People can, you can't do that. The law is still in, instituted. But you understand? I'm gonna save you by con. Come on, come on. I'm gonna save you by con. I'm not gonna save you by it. So we take it as an operation because it formulates a behavior for us. Y'all know it gives a behavior, because these are criteria he lets you know, this is what I do. He said, this is what I do. Y'all got me. So I want you to formulate, but I'm going to have to say you like con. He told us, see if that, hold on, let's see, 20, 20, 22, 22, 28. See if that 28, your cars are called 2081. Your cars are called. They call Ezekiel. Yeah. Let's see. Listen. The Debar of Yahuwah came to me saying, being of Adam, say to the Sar of Saur, thus says my Adam Yahuwah, because your lob is lifted up. Uh-oh, listen. He's talking, he talking to a ruler. He want to know something. Because your lob is lifted up. And you have said, I am mighty one. I see sit that? in the seat of mighty one. You said that? He said, I'm a mighty one. I sit in the seat of a mighty one. What happened? In the lob of the yom. Uh-huh. Yet you are in, in each and not all. You hear what he said? He said, heart lifted up. Not he was proud. He said, my heart lifted up. He said, I'm Elohim. I sit in the seat of him. I sit on the yom. The yon will represent the waters, okay? That's what the yon means. The waters also represent the, the people, people for That's multitude. Right. The only way for the understood multitude and the numbers was to show you a man. How, who can count the water? How, how did do, 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 do rain come down in um, pounds? Does it come down ounces? How does it come down? Millimeters, it come in drops, droplets pretty much? Can you count them? No. So that we try to tell when it came down to the multitude of people you're going to have. You can't count them. How are we going to understand? You say, that's crazy. How can you count something when you got numbers? That's right. He said, well, let's do that then. Let's try to count. Try to count the water. You can weigh it. You can't count it. You can measure by gallons or however you want to do by ton, but you can't count it, can you? Mm -hmm. Allahim said, he said, that's how the multitude is going to be. They're going to be as water. And now he's looking at, now the Shah, the ruler is saying this. He said, you know what? I'm Allahim. You know who can say this? At dumb. He said, I sit in the midst of the young. He said, I said it's Allahim. Mm. And you know what he wanted to know? 
He said, I'll know your love it like that. He said, you're a man. That's right. And you're not Allah. That's right. Let's see what does it mean there. Although you make your lob like the lob of Allah. Hold on for me. Although you, he said, although you couldn't be, you couldn't make your lob like it. Although you make your lob like the lob of Allah. Y'all remember Daoud? He was an Isha after Allah own lob. That's right. Isn't that right? He was an Isha after Allah own lob. That's right. And you, he said, you, he said, although you make your lob like that. So I love like Allah love. You're Isha. What happened, son? Behold, you are. Kakma than Daniel. Mm -hmm. Every, you, know, uh, you hear that? He said, you wiser than Daniel. Daniel would know because he could read the handwriting on the wall. When they came in and when the ruler of uh, the Medes came and he said he was troubled, uh, Darius, he, he saw a handwriting. Nobody can interpret it to him. Daniel told him, I know what it's say. He said, I can read it for He told him about it. It was talking about the Tigris River. He ran out everything that he made to him and That's let right. him know it. He said, you wiser than Daniel. Mm. You can listen. He said, listen, you can exalt. <clears throat> That's what he told him when Daniel, they brought Daniel in. He said, because they said, we already know the most high y'all rule with you. That's right. He said, and you can interpret. He said, you can dissolve any doubt. Anything you got problem believing, Daniel said, I can explain that right now. Mm. And now he just told that man right here, you, you wiser than Daniel. That's right. That's pretty good, ain't it? Then y'all dissolve all doubt. Mm -hmm. You smarter than him. Mm. Come on, son. Behold, you are Kakma than Daniel. Every one of secret things are not hidden from you. Look at that. Man, they come at you in the thing. Now, I'll tell you something. I who was smart for the little guy, Sh um, Shaluma, who they call Solomon. Right. He was smart. Listen, the, the Mal Kar, who they'll call the queen, queen of what you call her, actually a homosexual woman. A queen is not a proper name for a woman. Everybody like, hey, my black queen, my don't let they don't know that actually referred to a homosexual woman. The word for us is called Malkar. That's a one, that's an empress. Malkar is the word for a woman, not queen. Okay, the, the, what they call it, I'm the queen bee, drag queen and a dog. Come on. By your kakma and by listen by your listen by your wisdom now, and by but nah, and by your understanding. You have acquired riches for yourself. How y'all think, Sha how y'all think Sha uh, Shalom got all those goods he got? It's wisdom. When you listen, when Yahuwah asked him, listen, he he pulled out Yahuwah came up here to him, told him, say, ask what you will. That's right. He told, listen, ask what you want. He said, give me a bana law, an understanding heart. The judge of people. He said, I'll be able to shop it over these people. Yes, sir. I'll be able to judge over their people. That's right. Yahuwah said. This thing pleased me. Yes, sir. He said, because you didn't ask for the life of your enemy and you didn't ask wealth of yourself. That's right. He said, I've given you that wisdom above wisdom. He said, I made you the richest of all the amount, yes, all the amount of kingdom being. That's right. Guess how he got it? When folks seen him with all this stuff, you ain't believe how he got it. <clears throat> he said, by my wisdom. Mm. I never asked. That's why people don't realize. I'm telling y'all a secret. Y'all want to know it. That's why I don't pray for this stuff. You know how much sense it made for me to pray for this stuff? You want to know how I got what I got? By my wisdom. Mm. It'd be stupid. Solomon didn't pray for it. No. And he gave him more than he would even desire. That's right. That's right. That's right. Why do you think that now to him that's able to get, do more than you can? Mm. I don't even ask him for it. Come on. Look at that. First thing you do, you pray at night for it. I know. Don't worry about it. He just told you how you got it. He said you attained it by your, by your wisdom. Yes, sir. Listen. And have acquired gold and silver for your treasuries. Listen. But your great kakma, by your trade, you have increased your riches. You see that? Look at that man's skill set. He knew how to trade. Listen. And your lob is lifted up because of your riches. Listen. Therefore, thus says my Adon Yahuwah, because you have made your lob like the lob of Allahim. Yeah. Therefore, behold, I shall bring strangers upon you, the most ruthless of the Gawin, mm -hmm. and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your kakma mm -hmm. and defile your splendor. Uh -huh. They shall bring you down to the pit, mm -hmm. and you shall moot the moot of those who are slain in the lob of the yom. Hold what you got. 26 chapter, book of Matthew. This is what I do for a living. 26. 49. Matthew. Uh 
Make it 46. 26, 46. Yes, sir. Listen. Coom, and let us go. Behold, the one betraying me is coming and draws near. Mm -hmm. While he was still speaking, behold, Yehuda, one of the twelve, came. A large crowd with swords and with sticks was with him, who mm. came well, hold from on, the, a large crowd of what now? A large crowd with swords and with sticks was with him, mm -hmm. who came from the Rosh Kohanim mm -hmm. and the Zakanim of the arm. Mm -hmm. The one betraying him and had given them, the one betraying him had given them a odds, saying, The Ish whom I kiss, he is the one, capture him. Listen. He immediately approached Yahusha, Yahusha and said, Shalom to you, Ra'a, and he kissed him. Yahushua said to him, Maria, for what have you come? They approached, reached out their hands to Yahushua and captured him. So, do y'all see the connection? Because of Yahushua, this all going to correlate back to him. See, he operated two capacities. He had the heart of Elohim, but he was a man. He was not Elohim. Right, right. Not according to the flesh. Right. He said, you set your heart like it. He said, I'm going to bring strangers in among you. Right. He said, I'm going to bring the worst of these people in. He said, they're going to draw their swords out against you, against your splendor. That's right. That's right. And against your wisdom. That's why they came. He knew what would happen. He already knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of time what hurt us, you don't have enough information. So when things happen, the first thing you do, I make is you crash. Right. I make you faint. You give up. But he already knew what was going to happen because he already knew. When you set your heart to be as Elohim, he already knew it would come. Mm-hmm. He told him one time, he said, it's impossible. He said, a fence must come. come. There was no way for it not to happen. <clears throat> that man sat over the young. He knew it. Although he had done all these things, he posted to me, I'm doing that. He told him, he said, that was even in the garden. They know he was in the garden. Yahushua had been him. Mm. People just didn't know it. Right. He had already been. He told y'all that. He said, before he established all this stuff, before he made his decree, he said, I was I, there. That's right. Pick it up right quick. Eight and 17. Marshall Lee. They call it Proverbs. Listen. I ahab those who will hob me. Uh-oh. You already told you? I, he said, I hob them that ahob me. Uh-huh. And those who diligently seek me shall find me. Uh-oh. Y'all see that? You ain't going to believe it. When Yahushua had got up from the front of uh, Kubal, they were looking for him, wasn't it? One had come back and told, they had seen Yahushua. See, they didn't realize the folk kept looking. They didn't stop. When they came, they found he went in the grave. That's why they said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. No, no folk kept looking. Yes, sir. He told them what happened. Yes, sir. He said, I'll harp doing that to harp me. That's right. He said, no, that didn't deceit me, going to find him. Yes, sir. You ain't going to believe why you ain't find him. You ain't seeking him. No, diligent. it's wrapped up in an enigma. You ain't going to believe why you ain't going to find him. You're not diligent. Come on. Come on. You got to be persistent. Yes, sir. Come on. Riches and Kaboot are with me. Enduring wealth and Sadiq. Mm. Why you think he told you to seek you first, the Malkuth, the Alahim, and his Sadiq, and all these? Yeah, oh, how they gonna be at it? I'm trying to seek the Malkuth, I'm trying to seek him. He says, with me. Yes, sir. That's why I don't pray about it. You waste time. Yes, sir. And that's why he don't give it to you, because he know you're an idiot. Mm. You need to know it, you're an idiot. He told you what to seek first. Why That's are you right. seeking riches? That's right. Why are you seeking wealth? That's right. Why are you seeking relationship? He told you, seek ye first. He said, all of it's with me. That's right. So if not got him, how I don't already have it? That's right. Once I get this straight, then I'm going to start making him my goal. I know. You miss the goal every time. Listen. My pari is better than gold. See that? He said his fruit is better than gold. Come even on. The, even than pure gold. Listen. And my yield better than choice silver. Come on. I halak in the Darak of Sadiq. I walk in the way of righteousness. In the midst of the past of Sadat. Mm -hmm. To en endow those who ahab me with wealth mm -hmm. that I may fill their treasuries. See that? Come on. Yahuwah possessed me at the beginning of his Darak. Let's see this started in Barish Sheet 1 and 1. Come on. Before his works of old. Come on. From the ever, from everlasting, I was established. Mm. From Bereshit. Can you imagine that? See that? Why? Listen. 
That's why he started at the end. He said, listen, that man said, I was established from everlasting. That before, and this stuff even came as in. That's why that's he was right. coming on already. See, when he tells you you're whore, the existing one, that's already predated, already been going. Come on, that's right. You trying to find a start that he says, part. <laughs> if you want to start my, my start date, he said, look at everlasting. Come on. How you process that? You can't. I'm from a long time before you even get started. <laughs> How you process that number? <laughs> How do you process? I've been living a long time before they got started. Can't What's do the it. date? The man said that's when the man begot me. That's they, right. They think he was born December 25th. <laughs> the man just told the man possessed me. But listen, he said in, in bar sheet, this not your bar sheet. He said I was established from everlasting. Yes, sir. What you know why he would tell you that? Because I declared it in at the beginning. Yes, sir. Listen. From everlasting, I was established from Barashith, from the earliest times of the Arats. Listen. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. When, when there were when no the, springs. When the, writer, when the writers come up, it told him when Allahim came in here, he said that the water covered the earth. Yeah. He said when there was no depth, that before water even hit the place. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. When there, was, there were no springs abounding with Mayim. That, now, the spring, we didn't learn about the springs until he told he'll sever the seven springs that came out from the gun. That's right. He, told, he said, before those springs came, I was already established. Mm. Come on. Before the harem were settled. Before he told up, before he set the mountains. Mm. Come on. Before the hills, I was brought forth. And what happened? While he had not yet made the arats in the fields. Oh, my goodness. When we read, he told us, he, he thought like he came to it almost from the right. It like he came to it. It was just empty. It was just water him. He said, before he even made the rot. Mm. Before he even did it. What happened? Nor the first dust of the alarm. Mm. And that's where he told you he made man from. The that's dust. right. Come on. When he established the Shamayim. What'd you do? I was there. He came in and told you he made the Shamayim. He said, when he established them, he said, I was right there. What else, son? When he inscribed a circle on the pani of the deep. Mm. And he when folk living on the... These folk living in this square world. <laughs> Man told them about a circle. They still living in the square. Come on. When he made firm the skies above. Well, listen. When the springs of the deep became fixed. He set the foundations for them. That's how he make a firm. He set a foundation. He got pillars holding them up. Okay. Listen. When he set for the yom its boundary so that the Mayim should not transgress his command. Y'all hear that? That's why he put the sand down. The sand is a law for the water. That's right. Y'all been to the beach. You said water, come up that thing like that, and then it go. Right what back. it do? Because it's a law. Yes, sir. That's a tour. That's right. See, everybody doing it supposed to do itself for you. Yes, sir. Think of, look, Grant, he sat him down. That's when he put him down. Mm -hmm. He said, this is a law. It's a law. You'll see all, look at, you think, I'm, you're going to look at how much water you see and look at how much sand you see. Yeah. He got a law. That, listen, if all that Mayim can learn, it can't cross over. How you ain't learning? You can't. You ain't supposed to break none of them man or tour. This gonna be coming up against you in the day of you in the mm -hmm. human journey. You know how big that water is. Mm -hmm. The water is so large it bends. You're talking about that look. It's straight across it. First of all, you lying. You're not unless you're out of. If you look, it bends. Yeah. It's so big it bends. Yep. It, it. Listen, y'all ain't pay attention. Do you understand? Most places are below sea level. Yeah. Which means the water sits higher. higher. Yeah. That's right. And the sand still. Listen. And get what right. to do. Can't go past. I can't do that. That'll break the law. <laughs> That's right. Hear it. But guess what, though? Man, I can't stop saying it. I be trying and trying. It be so hard on me. Water said, hide and lay and still sat there. Yeah. He said, keep going. He said, but I will judge you in much pot. Yes, sir. In the much pot, I'm going to pay a sentence on you. I set it out there just so you can see it. You go there and see it. They said, I know what you're thinking. It do come up and it go over when he tell it. That's right. He only do that because he said, when I hate the people inside of it, that's how I make it through it. At this point, regurgitate it out. That's right. He used the mind. Whenever he used water to come flooded, at that point, it's a sickness. He said, vomit it up. That's where he used the water to vomit. Just like he made stuff come out. How many of y'all have drunk water before you wind up vomiting? You don't feel good. Worst thing sometimes you do is drink water. You done, you get a burp, that thing come up. Yep. He said, that's what I use. He said, at that point, I'm sick of you. And you know what these dumb people say? That's El Nino. The little boy. Grown man did it, and you want to call him a little boy. Right. They still got Jesus a baby. Mm -hmm. I want, they want me to serve a baby. 
make no sense. Man, grown, gone, dead, and yep. setting up ruling, and they still got a caught baby in the front yard. That's how bad people intelligence is. <clears throat> he used it to come in whenever he bring the waters in. That's why I told you, right there, go get all these places got to get it. Yeah. Atlanta got to get this. Yeah. He's sick of us. Sick of it. And people that just tell the people the truth, it's a sickness. That's why right. your body vomit? Sickness. Guess what he's trying to show you why he flooded these places. And get what they still doing. I know God is pleased with us. See, nature is what we use. He showed it worked against us. Nature worked against you, so you knew at this point there's a problem. These stupid people keep talking about something. Go to electric car. Only problem you got, what are you going to do to build these batteries? You're going to strip the arrots yep. to get it. You're not winning. You're stripping the arrots. <clears throat> Why y'all think this stuff is in the ground? It's a balance. But the bastards are so greedy, they strip it. They're going to strip the ground more to make electric cars than they do to get oil. Mm. Man, you're taking pressure mineral, you're taking lithium out the ground. Right. Y'all say, what, these, what battery better? Regular battery or lithium, lithium. battery? Lithium. They're going to rip the place. They're going to rip the place. These folks think they're going to win. Lithium battery is win thousands of dollars. Yes. You get a car battery for a hundred and some change. Yes. They don't get it. They keep thinking they move electric from gas. They keep thinking they get gas stove out of the house and go electric. Go ahead. You're just stupid. You don't realize. Repent. That's right. His people. Repent. That's right. That's right. Well, we keep thinking we're going to beat them out. Anything to get around doing right. It'll, it costs more money to do what they're doing than they do to live right. That's right. That's right. All we got to do is live right. Everybody got all people got to do. I'm talking his people. It ain't even everybody him. His people, the ones called by his shim. If we repent and live right. We stop running behind these people trying to be like them. If we do what we're supposed to do, he said, I'll heal the land. I'll heal the land. A lot of this stuff wouldn't be taught if we did what we're supposed to do. Go figure. Come on. When he set for the Yom its boundaries so that the Mayim should not transgress his command when he marked out the foundations of the Arats. Mm -hmm. Where were you? Then I was beside him. Uh-oh, what are you saying? Then I was beside him. As what? As a master workman. Uh-huh. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him at all times. See that? That's why he tried to tell that the Abba, he said he'll hop the bend. He tried to let us know that. He said he will please me the whole time. He looked at me, I was his delight. That's why when he see us, he got to see us through him. Mm -hmm. Which means we got to emulate him. Let me tell you something so you got to understand how they work. For us to inherit to come in possession of. The Malkuth was set up for one person. He actually stabbed that for Yahushua. Yeah. That's why he did it. It was for him. Right. Well, when Asu, who they call Esau, he was the one going to inherit everything from his Abba, which was Yasakop, who they call Isaac. His name means he laughed. Okay? It was for him. The only way for y Yacob, who they call Jacob, to inherit it, he had to emulate his Abba. Right. His Abba, he didn't just put on clothes. He had required a certain behavior. He said, make me savory meat such as I love. The one I love. Do what I love. Make me what I love. Make me what I have. And when he made it for him, he gave him all his wealth and possessions. The only way you're going to get it, you're going to have to emulate Yahushua. You ain't going to believe it. That means you're going to have to suffer. What do you think the purpose of letting you read what he done? Because this is what you're thinking. Coon. You thinking he came, he died, you do nothing. You're going to have to emulate everything he did in suffering and forgiving your enemy. You ain't going to believe it because he forgave you. How do you think you're going to get in? Everybody getting in is going to be emulated. We learned that from Asu. Right. When Yasakat was born, he told him through his seed, all Guin were going to be Barak. Guess what Asu did? I mean, what Ishmael did, he emulated the baby. Right. That's what he did. He started mimicking. If this is the one that Abraham Ahab, if this is the one that's going to inherit everything from Abraham, then I'm going to emulate it. But when Sarah seen him marking, she said that this child, let's see right quick, pick me up, 22, 21. Because I know they don't know. It's a skill level. They tell it's levels to this. When you get well, day, don't be saying that. That stuff come through the camera and get the member sick. They don't usually get sick. It levels to it. 
But what day did they eat? They done went back to Chilton Hill and went back to McDonald's. Uh-oh, she said she don't know. You know, he said at home, woo, fight for me. <laughs> Who is Bub, Dave? We're in the synagogue, Dave. We can't use street names. <laughs> Man, that was so funny. This is Barashik 21 and 6. Listen. Sarah said, Allahim had made laughter for me, everyone who shot me. Hold on a second. Let me get it. He went to 22. I did say 22. I said 21. 21 and 6. Let's see what happened. Sarah, Allahim has made, look, Sakaf. That means laughter. That's what his name means. That's what I tell you about Yas Sakaf. His name means laughter because she laughed. How his name came to be when she heard Abraham talking with the Malachi, the um, messengers that they call angels. She, when they, she heard them discussing that she was going to be pregnant and she was 90 and she was an old woman and she bust out laughing. And they asked her about it. He said, he asked her why she laughed. She said, I didn't laugh. That's how you know she's a black woman. They'll do that. Because she was saying that joke are old too. She laughed. She bust out laughing. She said, that joke are old. He's going to have a child and I'm going to be pregnant. She laughed. So when he asked about it, she questioned. She said, I ain't laughing. She tried to hold in like they wouldn't be doing. No gun way you were laughing. But anyway, when she had him, she named him Laughter. Because it made her joyous. She wasn't laughing because <laughs> it was so critical. She was laughing because it's, wow, that's funny. That is really funny. This man is, I'm 100 years old, and my age, I'm going to have a child. So when she had the child, she named him Laughter. Okay. Salvation brings you joy. You don't even know why. Don't worry about it. So I said, Allahim made me laugh for me. Everyone who hears Shama. With, hold on, that's intelligent. Mm -hmm. So you ain't, you ain't gonna worry. You don't know why you don't laugh, do you? Not intelligent. You don't have a skill set. You don't know what you're doing. Cause she said, everyone who hears shall laugh with me. <laughs> I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> Akuma Matata. We had somebody last week. What Akuma Matata meant? You keep playing, you're going to come up dead, Holmes. I said, on a kid cartoon? That's what it means. Now, y'all trying to get it out of me who said it. You can forget it. You can beat on my body, not on my soul. Wild horses can drag me. You won't hear me say Dr. Joe said it. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Akuma Matata. <laughs> come on. So. And she said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse Bani, Listen. For I have borne him a being in his old age. Listen. The Yali grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great muhad on the yum that Yasakak was weaned. Which means he was pleased with him. Why would he make a feast for him if he was unhappy with him? Why would he have a celebration for him if he didn't like him? He did it because he a hobbed him. That child, he had favor for that child. That's why he did it. Listen. Now Sarah saw the being of Hagar the Mizraite. Pay attention. She saw who? The being of Hagar the Mizraite. She saw the son of the Egyptian, who they would call the Egyptian. Come on. Whom she had born to Abraham, yeah. mocking. Uh-oh, mocking, mimicking. Marking, mimicking. What was he mimicking? Her? Walking around like he had it, he was pushing his stomach out like he was pregnant, telling him, I'm going to have a child for my daddy. The, the baby. What was she, we got to find out what was he mimicking. What was he mimicking? Therefore, she said to Abraham, drive out this maid and her being. Uh-oh, listen, drive out her and her son. Why? For the being of this maid shall not be an heir with my being with Yasakah. Let me ask y'all a question. See if you can think. Something should strike you. So had he not been doing that, was he going to be an heir with him? Mm-hmm. Mm. Why was it when he started mimicking doing the exact same thing the child was doing, she wanted him gone? Why she didn't want him gone while she was pregnant? Mm. Why she didn't want him gone after he was born? Why didn't she want him gone before they had their feast and he started mimicking doing the exact same thing and she said he could wind up being an heir, heir and a possessor like this child. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's not that hard. It's levels to this. <laughs> Skill set. Yes, sir. Pay attention. All you got to ask yourself, why she didn't put him out before this? Why was it once she caught him doing the same exact thing that he was doing, she knew that Abraham would see this 
and Abraham would no doubt would connect these two berith, these two mm -hmm. covenants, and uh, make him an heir. Joint heirs is what they would have became. Mm -hmm. And she knew the only way to keep them from being joint heirs, get him out, mm -hmm. disperse them. That's, That's the only right. way to keep him coming in possession. That's right. So get what you got to do to come in possession. Mimi. See that? It's levels. See that? See, now you got nodded. It's a lot. How many of y'all have read it before? How many of y'all knew this before I just told it to you? That's all it is. Now you know how to, now you have knowledge and now you've been given a skill set. So in order for you to become an inheritor of the Malchus <laughs> Allahim, what do you need to do? Mimic the baby? Mimic the man? Mimic the heir? You see that? Which means now you need information about what did the heir do? The one that come into possession of, what did he do? How did he perform? What attitude did he display? What was his workmanship? Versus, well, that's him. I can never be him. All I am is me. And I can, why would he take you in? The Malkuthu was to him. Let's see, 3, 16. Pick it up right quick. What I want, Galatia. <laughs> come on, get a check. Come on, you move too fast. Come on, come on, come on. My brother, Jack Call. Come on here, Joker. Three sixteen, Galatia. Listen, behold, one right up with your mama too. That way y'all be together. <laughs> and Sarah gave me that one. She said, "Get the son and his mama." Isn't that right? <laughs> and I know that when folk heard, I knew y'all were gonna laugh. Come on. Behold, the Shabbat was spoken to Abraham. Y'all hear that? The Shabbat. That's the promise. It was spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Uh oh, and to who? His seed. So what did they have to do to you? Nothing. If I'm talking to Sam, I'm talking to Cam and his son, what this got to do with you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, because I'm talking to him. So that's what he let you know. First of all, the Shabbat, the promise was spoken to Abraham and to his seed, singular. Listen. He does not say, say and to seeds as of many. Because Abraham had other sons. That's the only reason you knew about it. After his wife died, he married another woman named Qatar. When he married Qatar, she buried him son, Zimram, Amram, all of them she buried. Shua, she buried all of them to him. And when Abraham had got him, you know what he did? He sent every one of them away from Yasakah Why he lived. He sent them away. He separated them, divided them. Because you know why he did it. That's why you learned. Nobody understood before why he did it. Galatia had to teach you that. Yeah. Because he spoke to Abraham and to his seed. One. So Abraham already knew it made no sense for y'all to be around him. Y'all got to go. Because he was never talking to all of y'all. You couldn't be a possessor. Listen. He does not say into seeds as of many. But to who? But as to one. So what happened? And to your seed that is the Mashiach. That's tight. That's why we start now. We got to start looking at his lineage. Yeah. You got to start looking at lineage. That's right. Because then we start looking at the son, the Ben. We're going to look at the Beth, and we're going to look at the Noon. That's right. how you get the word Ben. Beth is the house. Mm -hmm. Noon is the seed, which means to continue, which means a son continues the house. Right. So now we start looking at, now since it's to the seed, the son, the only way to become an heir is to become a son of the father now. Because he can't be a son if he begets kids, he's a father. This is why in the book of Yeshayahu, the ninth chapter, they told you under us, uh, a yard at this point, child, under us, a bin is given. We needed a bin. We couldn't use a bar. And the rule? Should be upon his shoulder. And his shim, his shim shall be called, his name shall be called, one, counselor, the might of him. We got to go with the print. First of all, he got to rule over, he got to rule over peace. That's why he told a yarn to be still when it was storming. Because it told you he was going to be the Shah of Shalom. Yeah. So that's why they want to know what man of man is. They say even the wind, even Kadeem, and even the Yom obey him. That's right. We're showing us he ruled over it. That's right. See, when you have a storm raging your life, he said, I rule over that too. Mm. So you need to know it with no limitation. What you need? Okay, I'm a healer. Okay, I'm a feeder. What if you ain't hungry? And what if you ain't sick, right? What if you got some other stuff going on? Well, I got to show you I do that too. Other, see, you can't say you all when you limit. The fact that he declares that I'm all tells you I'm not limited. Right. 
So you need to know how to work. I think about it. He's a healer. You're sick. So you don't need him. Huh? He's a way maker. And you know where way, way you're going. Do you need him? See, I need to do some other stuff you have going on. How about you need a mind <clears throat> regulator? How about you need somebody to just talk with? See what I'm saying? He, you need to, when he says I'm all, I need to encompass every in every aspect of your life. Right, right. When things happening outside of you out here that has outside of your control, he's I, I rule that too. And that's why people faint and quit. When I used to get scared of that rain and thunder and all that stuff coming. I ain't but one person ruled out. Come on. See the person I saw, he he got that too. Yes, sir. And that. And what else you thinking? He he got that too. Yes, sir. See, that's that's one reason I said I can't use him. On my good day, when I don't feel bad, I can't use him. Not, he's a healer, he's a healer, <laughs> but I ain't sick. And I'm crying out to some people ain't sick. So they ain't gonna be able to use him. He bred when you're hungry. You hungry? Come on, put a check. <laughs> man, tell me he's hungry. Come on, man. What you doing, Cam? Cam, somebody tell me he went out here bread when you're yeah, you hungry. Yeah, I said, yeah, I'm hungry. Come on, man, get on. My brother Jack told me, said, if you say he bravely hungry, somebody gonna jump over how they hungry. You so think about all the different, so it's so many other things that we battle. And you need to know, I cover that too. I cover that too. Everything that you could possibly deal with. But the reason why people don't see him that way, because we feel like, ah, that's not really a Allahim thing. That's just something I'm dealing with. He said, I do all that, I'm a counselor. He the mighty Allahim. He I shot over Shalom. And then he told you, I'm the everlasting Abba. And the only way to become an Abba, you gotta beget something. You can't be a father unless you beget. Hello? That's the only way to be a father. And that you beget. And he can't, you can believe it. The Buddha said of his own will, he begot us. That's how he became a father. Yes, he's the son. He was the promise which took him as the son. But you didn't realize the son was gonna become the father. That's how he can, the only way for a son to continue, he has to have seed. So it means the son becomes the father. Make sense? Yes, okay. So you just un understand attribute, understand the working, understand the ideology of how he put this together. You know this from the flesh. Y'all got, I'm a son. I'm also a father. Y'all got it. Now how many people am I? You ain't gonna believe it. That's stupid. Talk, Jesus is the father. You heard that stupid stuff. That nigga crazy. Am I your son? I ain't swim. Am I your father? How many people am I? Why God and Jesus got to be two different people? That's just, they stupidity. How do you see how stupid people are? They're going to fight this. I'm also a husband. Can't, one, how many people are there? That's three capacities. How many people am I? And the book said these three are one. See, people are so stupid. He even told you the two should be one. That the son and the father can be one. Am I not one person? And I'm still a son and I'm a father. Go figure. It's, some, it's wrapped up in a enigma some kind of way. See, you got to be spirit. See, people tell you dumb stuff. He let you see this carnally so you can clearly see the stuff that people sit around and argue about. They're dumb. They're dumb. All you got to do is get their natural daddy. That's your daddy. Yeah. That's it. That's your granddaddy's son. How many daddies is that? They're dumb because people don't want to know. Listen, we talked about it before. How many senses do you have? If you got six, you're a creature. You have five. <laughs> so everything we know about him got to work inside those. All, all here working, all the ideals got to work him. Otherwise, I can't use them. That's how I process everything. I'm going to smell, touch. See, taste, what else I got, what I miss? Feel, all those I'm gonna do. Did I say feel already? Here, I said here. Let me try it over, let me start over. Here, they count. Taste, see, touch, feel, smell. I wanna say that, that's what I'm saying. Cause when Yasser caught, he had lost his eyesight. When he told your code to come clear, guess what he did? He could smell them. He touched them and he could smell them. So that's how he worked. He works inside a fire primitive. See, when you get outside there, see, it's a six cent. That's your mama. I don't pay you for it. Don't, don't, it don't make sense. How many people got six senses? 
He's going to work inside these five senses. So if I can't see it, smell it, taste it, uh, touch it, or hear it, why are you believing it? You see that? The wind. Can you taste it? You can do what? Feel it? And you can hear it. That's it. So the wind, every time he refers to the Ruach, he always used to correspond to the wind. Because it doesn't have a face. But guess what it do? It can take on the shape of. Look at a tornado. The wind lets it takes on a form. And then you can catch it with no form. It's just going. It just moves. And you don't know where it's going. And you don't know where it came from. But at the time, they didn't. Now you go to the meteorologists to tell you that. But before, they didn't have no idea where it came from. And they didn't know where it was going when it left there. But they knew it existed, that it came and passed through. Y'all got it? That's how we understand Yahuwah. He said, I give you things that are symbolic to so you can process it, so you can have an idea, a comparison. When Shaul told us comparing Ruach and things, Ruach, that's going to be kind of hard because you don't know enough Ruach to do it. But we're comparing carnal things so we get an idea of how Ruach works. You got it? And I appreciate the fact he don't leave us just dumbfounded and just leave us up to our imagination. Well, Yahuwah is whatever you think he is. I mean, what you think, what you feel. He said, we can't have that. We have to have symbolism. We have to, he said, I got to put what's practical. I got to instruct people so people know me. That's why he declared his existence to tell you that he's Yahuwah. That means the existing one. Can we look up the word existing? I try to let y'all go. I see y'all, y'all, I'm about to lose y'all. Are you learning anything, though? It's so important to get knowledge and skill with it. Existing in existence or operation at the time under consideration current. I don't like that. Mm, mm, mm. Stroll up. Let me see what this says. Let me see. Mm. Oh, live especially under adverse conditions. Anything else? Oh, I get origin. Let me see what the origin is. Latin, French, cis, slave. Okay. Compare with existence. What's, now, what verse? Let me say another dictionary. Let me say, who is this? It's just Google. Oh, Marion. Is that Marion West? Let me say. The state of independence. Independence of human. The state or fact of having being, especially independently of humans. Well, that could make sense. Because in the fourth chapter of the book of your Ukanon, in two and four and twenty-two, he told you that you should call, which when you prostrate about yourself or you worship, he said you don't know what you worship. He said we know what we worship. Yada is the word. He said for for uh, Yeshua, salvation is of the Yahudim, which means it came out from the Yehudi. He said, and the hour is and now cometh when the Amat Shakar. Shikar, which are the true worshippers, he said they're going to shakar the Abba in the Amats, which is the true, and in Ruach. He said, for the Abba seeketh such to do so. He told the Allahim, which means he exists independently of humans. Sometimes you might think you have something to do with his existence. You don't. You ain't going to believe it. He will never tell you that you will be the existing one. He will never give you that title because you exist through humans. You need humans in order for you to continue to exist. He said, I operate independently. Y'all got it? They don't support me. Humans don't support me. Humans don't, they don't do anything for me. Y'all got that? So you look at the existing one, that makes a difference. You look at you thinking, he need me. I don't. You, he told you without me, meaning you not Yahuwah. Got it? I operate independently. Y'all understand that? Sole proprietorship. Y'all got it? I don't need human. Humans need me. Y'all got it? I had to come into you. You can't come into me. If you, did, you wouldn't have anything to do with my existence. I existed before you ever came. So it's important for us to establish rule. Like parent tells, listen, 
I'm the parent, you the child. When they put you down, they let you know, let go ahead and bag this out. Don't ever put yourself on my level. You are the child. Right. You know what I'm saying? They let you know to shut it down. That's basically what they let us know. I don't need you. You need me. Y'all all right? We just want to know who you're dealing with. Because sometimes you might feel like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the one keeping him going. No, he said, no, I, I operate independently. Of him. So the fact that he told you that how all of him had to be Shakar. He said, you got to do it in the Ruach, because he Ruach. So now we learn a lot of things we might do hands and doing. This don't get it for him. In the, in the book of your cause, God tried to let y'all go. He said, they come unto you as the arm coming. He said, they hear your word. He said, but they, see that? He talked about all those different things. So you can come in and worship, but you don't really have to understand. It has to be something internally that you do. It had to be some. it has to be a keeping. It has to be an ideology, the way you think and you process things, because you're dealing with a Ruach Nibin. Y'all got it? And you got to understand how you got to submit yourself totally and wholly over to him. Not wholly H-O-L-Y, but H what? W-H-O-L-L-Y. Holy, completely, or entire. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the giving of your whole self. And a lot of times what we'll tend to do, we'll give so much of ourselves, then we can release ourselves. You know what I'm saying? You come in for the hours again that time after that, then it's me. He said, no, I need somebody to worship me. They're, it don't matter what the time is, I'm always in existence with them. They're, I'm always, I'm always encompassed. And he gave them that premise with the Torah. Lay down. Get up. When you walk in with your friend, when you come back in your house, you're going to write upon your door. So, so the premise of how you serve him or should call him in a total completeness was there by the Torah. But see, it's a matter of extraction. See, he said, when you do this, it's going to be continued. When you're talking, he said, talk about me. When you get ready to lay down, think on me. He said, listen, when you get up, when you get your, I want you to talk about me well. It's always, that's how you got them in the premise of understanding where it's a completeness with him at all times. You know what I'm saying? It becomes an operation with him. That's, that's what we're going to achieve. Going to mean we haven't. Going to says, this is where change is going to come in. Because we got to transition it in. He don't need no uh, um, Stephen Wonder had him. Do, 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 Part time lovers. That's what he don't want. Part time lovers, they do that, then they go somewhere else. Like people have a part time job, what that mean? That mean they got another one. That's how, So when you're a part time lover, you that means you got another Yahoo. Another, you have another Alahim. That's why he said, I want you to give me all. You know, they got some jobs, you can't even work another job. Yeah. Years ago, when coming out, they used to call it moonlight. Yeah. It was, they'll fight, they call it moon. When you work there, they call it moon. They said, we'll do moonlight. Right. Right. He said, hold on, I can't have nothing. So no, when you work here, you got to be this and that alone. You won't find no FBI agent that do part-time security down at Kroger no well. They can't have no other job. Because that job called for all of them. They can, it, that's it, they can't do no part This is all they can do. Secret Service can't work and go out to prison in and go run down at the auditors and do some security. I had nothing, no. Because that job called for so much of you, you can't commit to anything, y'all. Because this job can call me at any time, and that's how he wants you to be. You can't commit to another Alahim. When you leave room over, you got a part time job, and that's all you got. What you typically looking for? Another job. So guess what? So to keep you from looking for somewhere, Chris, I'm going to need all your time. Y'all understand that? That's the only way you're going to make it. Make sense? Yes, sir. That's two.